Blog Talk Radio. 2017. Big truth. The big talk for you. What up? Shout out Apple King. Big Boo. Me. Shout out everybody. Check it. Hey, yo, the big talk for you so you can absorb. Information be a charge so you can afford. Get poppin'. Live off the greatest doctrine To produce know the ledge like the great rock him On a mission, not a small time thing Defense biblical, offense got the haters watching Hands and skill, footwork is still Get in the den, see if you can stand for real If you rep Kimmy cool, yo I rep Israel If you Torah based only or new as well Welcome to listen, style always fair decision Two sides come together to compare what's written Seeking the facts, seeking the match Teaching the act, leaking the tracks Call while you eating your snacks Music in my bones, DNA, C, double E and K Little something for the showtime, it's a play One love My name is Kiaja, and if you want to hear the best debates in the world, come check out Debate Talk for You, hosted by my dad, Sal Showtime. Bye. Yeah, Shalom. I want to give a shout out to Sal at Debate Talk for You. What's going on? Hey, Debate Talk for You is where it's at. You know, get your verses straight, put your cell phone record, come on board, present what you got. If anyone try to cut you off, Sal will just mute that guy's mic. You know, he'll let you express what you got. He'll let you present what you studied for. Let the audience decide if what you got, you know, is inside the scriptures. Debate talk for you once again. Shout out to Sal. Terrific job. Hey, you can press number one or find yourself on a lion's den. Peace and blessings to everyone that's listening. This is Moray Yakel, the mighty Hebrew, Lion of Judah with Campaign for Biblical Literacy Ministries. Walking in the way of my forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Observing the Torah, slaying devils, and manifesting the blessing of the Mosai. Come by, pay us a visit by going to my website at www.campaignforbiblicalliteracy.com. And by going to my YouTube channel at Campaign for Biblical Literacy Ministries. Shalom. Hi, this is Tyrone Thompson, host of the Blog Talk Radio broadcast, Talk Real Solutions. Please tune in and listen to all of our shows seven nights a week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at Talk Real Solutions. We cover a variety of topics to ensure we speak about what may be needed in our community at any time. Talk Real Solution is the hottest blog talk radio show going on right now. You can listen to our broadcast at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash talk real solutions or visit our website at www.talkrealsolutions.com. Also like our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash Talk Real Solutions. You can call in at any time during the show and add to the conversation and offer your solutions at 1-858-357-8453. That's 1-858-357-8453 because at Talk Real Solutions, We want to make sure you have a chance to talk real solutions. (laughs) 
Shalom Israel. This is Pastor Nobody from the Fountain of Israel.com. When I'm not feeding the flock or studying the word, I get a front row seat in the lion's den with Sal Showtime. This is where Bible gladiators cross swords and settle the score for the entertainment and education of the people. Fountainofisrael.com, Pastor Nobody. Debate talk for you, you're in the lion's den. Shalom. Never allow the possibility of your heart desire to trouble your mind, whether it is success or happiness, because your mind is a powerful machine that is very capable of manifesting anything that it conceives and believes in. Become more enlightened about life and the subconscious mind by visiting courtsforthemind.com. You are only as strong as the thoughts that constantly dwell in your mind. Therefore, never allow any negative belief about your abilities in life to be granted shelter in your mind. Edmund Mbiaka, BoothForTheMind.com Blessed be our Father God and His Son Jesus Christ. This is your beloved brother LeVar, cult teacher at Absolute Bible Truth Ministries. And I'm taking this tremendous opportunity that Brother Sire has given me to invite you guys out there listening to the Absolute Bible Truth broadcast on Blog Talk Radio. If you are out there and you have been searching for biblical truth or you want answers to your questions, you can catch us every Saturday, the weekly Sabbath day our Father has given us. We begin our teaching in between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Call in by dialing 319-527-6197. Again, call in by dialing 319-527-6197. Our lead teacher, Brother Josh, serves us up a meal. And I promise you, if you have a hunger for understanding the word, you will get full. Also, like our Facebook page, which is the title of our ministry, Absolute Bible Truth, all one word. In addition to that, check out our website, AbsoluteBibleTruth.com for other study material and online classes. Absolute Bible Truth is a congregation who focuses on the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth concerning the Word of God while leaving out all personal opinion, speculation, and belief. Thank you. You don't want to miss checking out the most controversial video of the year. Everybody's talking about it. A video produced by Absolute Bible Truth teacher, Brother Josh. The video is entitled, Is There a Secret Gay Agenda Amongst the Comedic Conscious Groups? Once again, it's one of the most talked about videos right now. And you want to make sure you go check it out. So go to the website, www.absolutebibletruth.com forward slash store. And once you get it, it's an automatic download. You don't have to wait for it to be sent to you in the mail. It's an automatic download. So once again, go check out the video, get it fast, and get it now. This is Renald Francois representing from Atlanta, Georgia. And when I'm not busy in the studio, I'm checking out Debate Talk for You Radio. Keep up the great work, Sal Showtime. Hey, what's going on, family? How you guys doing? Welcome to another show. You're now listening to Season 7 of Debate Talk for You. I'm your host, Sal Showtime, and we are back with another classic show for you guys. Well, once again, we are back, and we definitely appreciate the listeners out there that's tuned in all across the globe. Be a phone or via Skype, down that number, 319-527-6239. We're just waiting for the other special guest, Chris Harris, to call in. Uh, just sent him a text, and actually, hopefully he calls in. But in the meanwhile, we're just uh, bringing G-Consciousness. For those who don't know who G-Con is, you can uh, check him out on YouTube. Uh, check out his YouTube channel, check out his radio show on Vlog Talk. And we introduce him to the world, G-Con, welcome to the show. What's going on? Peace. How you doing, Sal? What's going on to the audience out there? Peace and blessings to the family. Praise the Most High God. Uh, like Sal said, like Sal said, you know, you can catch me out on uh, you can catch me on G Consciousness, my YouTube page, 
lately we've been, we've been dealing with that flat earth uh, thing, so uh, you might want to get over there. I mean, Kevin G over there on uh, G Consciousness uh, YouTube, my YouTube channel, chopping that stuff up, dealing with the science, dealing with the uh, with the text just as well. So y'all go over there and check that out. Make sure y'all subscribe. Also, uh, upcoming, you know, uh, on Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday nights, we're gonna be dealing with uh, a lot of evolution, a lot of uh, and dealing with atheists. And so y'all might want to check that out. The title of that show is gonna be premiering uh, this Wednesday coming up, and it's gonna be titled uh, "What Atheists Don't Tell You." What atheists don't tell you. So every every uh, Wednesday we're gonna have that show. We're looking at uh, we're gonna announce the time the time probably this weekend. So we're looking at to uh, for that to premiere this uh, Wednesday, every Wednesday nights. So check us out on G Consciousness Radio Blog Talk Radio. You know y'all might want to get on over there. Make sure y'all subscribe. Hit that indication button so every time we come on, you know uh, y'all can hear from us. And um, you know uh, we're gonna have people that, uh, calling in, dialoguing with us, and. Uh, you know, just giving out the information. Me and Kevin G., uh, the brother Carlos, and some other brothers that's well studied in that area. We're going to be talking about um, social science, uh, you know, uh, uh, also uh, natural science. So the different science that we see that's out there and uh, also dealing with eugenics and different things of how people have taken the science and how they have uh, used uh, politics, politicians to, uh, you know, basically uh, – Establish uh, what we see in this world today, our current world, um, you know, uh, poverty, you know, uh, people using the science or evolving the science by way of uh, using weaponry, mass destruction on weaponry. We just got do, got done seeing uh, some of that taking place, actually, uh, biological warf- warfare by way of using, you know, this science. And uh, science is a good thing, but if you don't study social science, then you know you know that's the study of human beings and observing them and experimenting on them, learning their behaviors. So um, we're going to be dealing with all of those things. So y'all might want to tune in every Wednesday on G Consciousness Radio, Blog Talk Radio, and uh, the title of that show is going to be "What Atheists Don't Tell You." And so uh, you can check me out on my Facebook page just as well. And also uh, I am affiliate of Soldiers of God S O G. So with that being said, that's the information that I got to give, and uh, peace. I want to get a G-Conscious this right here. Uh, G-Con, since you're already here, you might as well let them know about the hot seat segment we got going on. Uh, you know, let the world know about that for next week. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, SOG going to be in, sitting down uh, on the on the hot seat on uh, debate talk for you. So it's going to be uh, me, um, vocab, well, basically all those who can make it that night, 60 minutes of just, you know, flaming hot seat. So those that want to call in and got questions concerning history, science, the biblical text, whatever we're dealing with it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I suggest you guys call in, you know, um, it's going to be next Friday. Is it next Friday? or I know it's on the, uh, what is it, the 18th, right? Yep, it's so on the 18th, on the 18th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, check us out on the 18th. You know, we're going to have the whole SOG, Soldiers of God, over there getting it in. Uh, looking forward to this discussion tonight, you know, about the Moshiach, the Messiah, you know, uh, the ultimate Messiah, the innocent one, the one who has shed his blood, for us, and no other can shed their blood and be innocent and bear the sins of the people and be innocent as he was. So this is going to be definitely a great conversation tonight or discussion. So y'all might want to tune in. Make sure y'all share this uh, tonight. Uh, it's always a pleasure to dialogue with the brother Chris Harris, you know, as well. You know, um, he don't get sloppy and, uh, you know, he, he, he mixes it up pretty nice. Yep, so that's it. Okay. And just to let the people know, it's going to be actually on the 18th. That's going to be a Tuesday, actually. It's going to be a Tuesday night, so make sure you call in. Uh, we're going to try to have the entire uh, SOG here. You know, so anybody have any questions, you know that number by now, 319-527-6239. But let's go to my brother. He's here now. 
my brother is here. He, you know, a lot of people know him through some of the debates, some of the roundtable discussions, but he is here tonight for dialogue. This is Chris Harris. Welcome to the show. Peace, everybody. How y'all doing tonight? What's up, G-Con? What's going on? Peace to you, brother. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Um, all good. Just sorry for calling in late. I had uh, I was playing some basketball, man. Thirty-eight years old, out there running circles around them kids, man. <laughs> yeah, buddy. All good. It's all good. Uh, let people know what's been going on with you lately before we begin. What's been happening so far? Um, you know this. Um, these past um couple of weeks have been quite exciting for me, as well as trying. You know, trying times for me also um, concerning my faith, um, concerning my um, practice. Um, you know, um, got a lot of, um, been getting a lot of calls from um, different brothers, um, someone to be edified, someone to criticize. Um, you know, it's just, it's fun, it's interesting at the same time. But, you know, I just always ask people, like, we can still be brothers and sisters because we still a people. And we still over here together. And at the end, all we do is have one another. So no matter what I believe or what I understand, that don't mean we can't treat each other with equal weights and measures. Okay? Um, um, it's, it's just, you know, sometimes you get people that try and call you and put fear into you in order to get you to understand something. And the one thing I do enjoy about speaking with G-Con about is, you know, when we talk, we just talk. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, matter of fact, that's how all the soldiers of God normally are. You know, sometimes I talk to So Real, Sister Sherry. Uh, I think his name is Devoted to Y'all. We've spoken, and uh, we may not always agree, but, you know, our, our minds can come together, and, um, you know, we can all get together and learn um, from one another, you know. Can I say something else real quick? I want to give a, a special shout-out to So Real because, this week I was feeling real down, man, and that brother kind of lifted up my spirits a whole lot. So I wanted to give a special shout out to So Real, man, and tell him a personal thank you. All right, that's keeping it real right there, no doubt. Uh, since you're here, Chris, let people know about the debate going down on Friday, May 5th. You know, might as well do some early promotion for that. Let them know what that is. Um, What's going on? All right, well, you know, I'll be debating Brother Josh, and we're going to be debating the subject of Psalms 110. I believe that is about King David and all his accomplishments, and that is not about um, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Joshua, or um, as it, um, you know, as people um, claim it to be. Um, my stance is no longer whether people want him to be the Messiah or not. My stance is from now on, he is not, he is not written as it is written. Um, sometimes when you sit up there and say, no, he ain't the Messiah, um, it becomes very um, confrontational. But, yeah, I'm coming for um, Josh's crown. I'm going to give um, my best showing. I'm going to put all my scholarship up. I'm going to sharpen up the sword. Um, it's definitely going to be a great show. Um, I hope everybody tunes in for it. Um, you know, like I told Sal, um, if I can learn something, I'm all for learning. But until now, I want to show everybody the Torah. I want to teach everybody the Torah as I'm learning the Torah, and I want to be able to grow with the debate talk for you family. Um, so once again, it's going to be me and Brother Josh, and uh, we will be getting it in on May 5th. It won't be no tab dancing. It won't be no buck shucking and jiving. It's going to be straight scripture, and everybody know Josh and how he gets it in. You know, he's a, he's, a, he's a legend on this platform, and as stated before, Ali was an underdog versus listing, and we saw how that went down. All right, so once again, it's going down <laughs> Friday, May 5th. I'll give you a title later on officially, but uh, we're going to get this dialogue started. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, – I'm going to let you guys talk for like maybe 20 minutes, uninterrupted, you know, dialogue. I can speak to each other. And uh, after that, I'm going to like dedicate like 10 minutes to the audience. So 20, 10, 20, 10, 20, 10. All right. So uh, I guess whoever want to start the dialogue can begin.
All right, well, um, since G-Con is the veteran on the show, and um, like I said, I started off on this format by listening to a lot of his um, lessons, I'm going to let him get it started. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, you know, um, I hold the position in dealing with Isaiah 53, that Isaiah 53 is talking about um, Jesus, or who we call Yahshua. And so... Um, there's been many um, translations or, you know, um, they say that it's talking about Israel, you know. Um, but as we go through these things today, it's going to be proven without a shadow of a doubt that um, it's not talking about Israel. You know, it's the prophet Isaiah who is speaking on behalf of the other prophets who Israel have not believed the report. That the other prophets, starting from Moses and Abraham, well, I started from Moses, but Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, you know, um, these to Moses and so on, been prophesying about this Moshiach, this uh, ultimate Moshiach. There are many, um, many of uh, Moshiachs are anointed ones. But there is one who is innocent out of all of them, who would shed his blood, and one that is uh, pictured or depicted as um, priest, prophet, and also king all at once. So I think that, uh, you know, I, I debated this uh, with uh, Judah of Nazareth before, uh, Nazareth. I have you said his name. I debated this with him before. I think I pointed out clearly what this interpretation is saying. Uh, the Jews have done us a disservice, you know, for the most part. You know, they killed all the prophets, every one of them. And um, anyone that came in the name of the Lord or anyone came preaching contrary or teaching contrary to what their traditions was, from these oral traditions and writings, these guys were flamed up. They rejected it. So tonight, you know, we're going to prove to you that what Isaiah was teaching on in Isaiah 53 was in regards to a Messiah, an anointed Messiah, one who would shed his blood, who knew no sin, who knew no violence, who had no deceit, who had knowledge, and also one who um, bore, the, bore the sins and also prayed for the people and made intercession for the people. And Isaiah pointed towards, the, towards him. The prophets also pointed towards him. And that's what, you know, we're going to have a discussion on uh, uh, tonight. We're dealing with the, uh, the Christian. That's the position that I hold. It's not talking about Israel as the suffering servant. Has Israel suffered? Has the prophets suffered? Yes, they have. But, you know, when it comes to this verse or this chapter, Isaiah 53 or Isaiah 52, you know, um, it's not talking about Israel. It's talking about the anointed one. They hold the position that the, they hold the position that Isaiah 52 on, uh, or finishing up in Isaiah 53 is the nations talking about Israel. Oh, Israel suffered for our sins. They bore our iniquities. And by their, uh, by, uh, the, by their stripes, we are healed. We who the nations are healed. This is what, this is the view that they hold. This is the view or commentary that the Jew, Jews have given us. The Jews are not doing accordingly to the Father at all. They have misguided us. They have caused prophets to be killed. They have uh, killed the Messiah. And I uh, also wish that anybody that is a Gentile will be not saved. But God in Isaiah 28 and 11 said that he will speak unto these people um, with tongues of babes, basically by people that are no people. And in these last days, that's what God has done. Because Israel 
you know, has has, has basically uh, stumbled and fall, fell. But God will raise them back up. But uh, God forbid today that we're going to let Chris come in here and tell us that this is talking about Isaiah. I mean, talking about the nation of Israel and not uh, the Moshiach, the anointed one, Yahshua. And that's my position there. Okay, so I guess I'm going to just pick up from um, where G kind of left off. Um, one more time, shalom, um, peace, ashe, um, to debate, debate talk for you um, family <clears throat> and all the listeners out there. My position is Isaiah 53 is about Israel. Um, we know if you read Isaiah 30 all the way to 53, you'll see that it is about Israel. Every prophecy, every line, every sentence is about Israel. Israel is the father's chosen servant. It says it time and time and time again. The one thing about Christianity and what it has accomplished, I'm not even going to say what it's done, but what it has accomplished, it's enabled the reader to now become blind to the mission that the father has for Israel and that he has continually set forth for Israel. Who is this suffering servant? Who's been thrown into slavery? Who's been in and out of captivity? Whose priests have been killed? Whose prophets have been killed? We talk about Christ. We talk about his suffering. I understand that to a certain point. But in this instance, from Isaiah 53, this is speaking about Israel. And I'm going to show everybody linguistically, grammatic, um, grammatically, and I'm going to show them through the precepts that this is talking about Israel. It's not talking about their Christ. It's not talking about anyone else. It's talking about the Father and his chosen elect, Israel. All right. Now, let me ask you this, uh, Chris. Uh, in Isaiah, are there more than one servant in the book of Isaiah besides Israel? Um, are you, what chapter are we speaking about here? Uh, we know that Cyrus is called a servant as well, right? He's also called a Messiah as well, too. Correct. Right, so he's, and then we, and then we know also that um, Isaiah is called a servant also too, right? I agree. Right. So who is the servant in Isaiah forty nine and six? Let's let's go there. You want to go there with me? Yes. All right. Um, I'm gonna read it for you. Um, but can I? I'm gonna read from um, verse three. Can I say that? Can I read from there first? Because I like to read two yes. verses up. You know how I read. <laughs> uh, and it says, "And he said to me, You are my servant, O Israel. Uh oh, in whom I will be glorified." Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord and my work with God. Okay? And now the Lord says, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring back Jacob to him, so that Israel is gathered to him, for I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. And my right, God so shall be my servant. Right, so stop right there. Now, you okay. just read clearly. You read clearly at the top, you are my servant, O Israel. Would you agree? Correct. He's talking to the same person when you get down to verse 6. Can I can you, you want me to read? It? Yes. Okay, it says, Indeed, he says, is it too small a thing that you should be my servant? to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Right. Okay. Now, the tribes of Jacob consist of all of Israel, right? Um, correct. I'm sorry? Yeah, I agree. Right, right. So who is raising up the tribes of Jacob? You're talking about at this point, at, at this point in time, in um, the historical um, preface of this, right? Yes. Who is he speaking to? Uh, let me see. Let, let, can I continue to read? <laughs> if you don't mind. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because I want to let I want to let the uh, prophet do all the talking. Okay. 
It says, I will give you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to whom, excuse me, to whom man despises, to whom the nation abhors, to the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes shall also worship because of the Lord who was faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. Okay? Um, well, in Isaiah 49, I'm going to sit up there and say he's speaking to Israel because at this point, at this point, he's redeemed Israel. He has redeemed Israel, and he wants them to do his job. He could be talking to Israel, or he could be talking to the first holy family of Israel, which is the priest. Right, right. But it, it says clearly here, he says that um, he says that you are... He said that you, he said, I have chosen you to raise up the tribes of Jacob, which you just said that um, clearly that the tribes of Jacob consist of all of Israel. Now, Correct. and he says, so, so if he's chosen to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and let's not forget the preserved of Israel that's mentioned there just as well, or the preserved mm -hmm. out of Israel, the preserved out of Israel would be those priests that you're talking about. So Correct. whoever this individual is, he's not only chose to raise up the tribes of Jacob, which consists of all of Israel, but also the preserved out of Israel. And not just that, it says also there, the Gentiles. Now, that means that this servant that he's talking to there is basically someone other then Israel, they will raise up the tribes of Israel, the preserved of Israel, and also the Gentiles. That's what it's saying there. So, okay, you stated now, hold, earlier, hold. okay, I'm gonna let you talk. Okay, I'm sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. You you stated earlier that there are more than one uh, servant in the Book of Isaiah. We clearly stated that. Who is this Correct. servant? It raises up the tribe of Jacob. Uh, mm -hmm. The preserved, the tribes of Jacob, the preserved out of Israel, and also the Gentiles, that his salvation may be unto all of the ends of the earth. Go ahead, brother. All right, so we're talking about the remnant of Israel. Is this, is what, is this where we're going with it, right? Um, I, I mean, you can go there with it. I mean, well, you got a precept for that? Well, like you say, you, you got the, the scripture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got one for you. Let's go to right. Zephaniah um, verse 3 and 13. Okay. Zephaniah verse 3 and 13. Okay. You want to read that? Oh, you can go ahead and read it because uh, right now I can't read okay. that too much. All right, now it says, The remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed their flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. Now we know when King Cyrus was chosen to be their Messiah, he also commissioned them to, um, he also commissioned them to go and rebuild their temple. Am I correct? Rebuild the yes. walls and rebuild their city. Am I correct? Okay, now yes. we know that the father anointed King um, Cy Cy excuse me, Cyrus so um, he could do a special mission for his children. He also told King Cyrus that, see, I got this gum in my mouth, excuse me, G Khan. Um, he also told King Cyrus, um, King Cyrus also issued a, de a decree to everybody around Israel that nobody touched them, let them return home so they can rebuild the temple. So we got we know for a fact that this servant that um it's speaking of, this person that is speaking of, when he said, I shall raise up Jacob, the twelve tribes of Israel, um, to um allow them to go back home excuse me, allow them to return back home and rebuild the walls and their temple, that decree was issued by Cyrus, King Cyrus. Right. So 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 basically you're saying that this Isaiah forty nine and six is talking about Cyrus. Um, can, can we go to let's yeah let's go to right, uh, right, Isaiah right, forty five right, right, right. before, before you do that before you do that okay. that scripture that you just talked about read that again yeah. the scripture that you just read read that again okay the remnant 
This is the remnant returning back into the land. Mm-hmm. All right, it's all, and after every captivity, there was a remnant that returned to the land. All right, of all the tribes. Can you agree with that? Yes, definitely. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, the remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed their flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. So we know when King Cyrus issued that decree, uh, as we were talking about who um, raised up the tribes of Israel, we know when he issued that decree, nobody was supposed to bother Israel on their sojourn back home. Because if they did, he was going to smash on them. Bottom line. Right, right, right. Now that text right there, you know, I did with eschatology. You know, I'm great with it. Um, Come that on. text right there <laughs> is an end time fulfillment. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is an end time fulfillment. That does not apply to what we're dealing with now. In other words, when you read that text, for those that want to do their homework, read the whole chapter. You're going to see that that is a text. You can look at it right now. It's talking about what Christ is going to do in the end times to cause basically these nations not to be defiled or no deceit to be among them when he turned ungodliness away from Israel. That's what that text is talking about. Um, There is going to be a remnant of Israel that God is going to deal with, uh, and that is an end-time prophecy. So when you look at that whole chapter there, you're going to see time is of an essence, and right now at this moment, uh, we see that that's what that's dealing with. So you might want to check yeah, that they out. Yeah, they're dropping bombs before. everywhere. they dropping bombs everywhere. I got you. Right. All, right. All right. But let me, okay. let, me, uh, so, uh, let, me, let me grab let me grab this real quick because you jumped to the wrong precept, precept and jumped to Zephaniah, but we can just stay right in the book. Let me show you something real quick. Um, Isaiah 42 and 6, we can stay right there. Hold with on, it. hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. We can stay right there. But I want to, I'm, right. I'm, I'm trying to get, uh, I want right. to finish up with Cy- Cyrus right quick, okay? Okay, I go want ahead, to finish brother. up with that. That's only fair. That's only fair. Okay, go ahead, brother. Okay, cool. Now watch this. Um, this Isaiah chapter 45, um, 1 through 7. It says, Thus say, I'll, I'll read fast. Thus saith the Lord to his Messiah, or anointed. We know when you translate that word anointed, it's Messiah. To Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, that same right hand that established Jerusalem out of Egypt. All right, I mean Israel out of um, Egypt to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of kings to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break the pieces, the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God beside me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. That's, what I, that's why I wanted to read that for you, because Cyrus got put right. on a mission, and the Father commissioned right. him. Okay. Right, because I, I kind of find it odd that you started off saying that Isaiah 49 it, uh, starts off as Israel has been his servant, and now it's um, uh, Cyrus. Now, you know, I, I find it no, odd. But let no, me. Uh, we, we, I went to who raised up Israel, who had to bring Israel, um, who had to go and rescue Israel. Because when we talk about raising, remember, Israel has been redeemed. The Father has redeemed Israel now. In other words, freed of bondage, and He's allowing Cyrus perform this special mission so Israel can return home and they can rebuild their temple. Right. Uh, yeah, that, Yeah. I, I definitely disagree with that. I'm pretty sure that um, if we uh, look at uh, probably Rashi or any other sages, they'll they'll disagree with that too. So we, well, I will pull that up a little bit later and get off into that and some of the things that they say about that verse, some commentary on what they say. Um, now, uh, Isaiah, uh, now if you look at it, it says uh, that thou mayest go I mean, that thou mayest say to 
the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness. Show yourselves. They should feed. What, 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 what chapter are we in, bro? What chapter are we in? This is Isaiah, this is Isaiah 49. Uh, I'm just reading a little bit okay. more down uh, at the 6. So he says, I will give you for a covenant to the people and uh, uh, to establish the earth and to cause to inherit the desolate heritage that thou mayest go, I mean, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves. Now, here's the thing that I want to bring out because um, uh, Isaiah 42 and 6 is, is, is uh, something that's very important. It says, uh, Isaiah 42 and 6, it says, the Lord have called thee in righteousness. I will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for, the, for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open up blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of prison, out of, out of the prison house. I am the Lord that is my, I mean, I am the Lord that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. Now, when we look at this scripture, it's clear that this scripture is saying that God will be a covenant uh, of the people. He would be for the people. Uh, he would, this, this servant would be for a covenant to the people, right? Would you, I mean, can you see that there? I will preserve thee. He says, um, what does he say? He says, I have called thee in righteousness. And I will hold mm-hmm. thy now, hand and I will keep now. it. Right. You're right. It does say that. But in order right. to get a full understanding of this, we got to let the prophet speak. And I like to start from the beginning. And he says, behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect. Who's his elect? Israel. He tells you that time and time again in the book. In whom my soul delights. Now, if we go back to Isaiah 53, let's go back to Isaiah 53 one second, beloved. All right? Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah. we hold, read hold, this. Hold, hold, hold. Okay. Wait, hold on before you do that because I was I was just finna, what's called, you know. Okay, was, okay. You hold that, hold, hold right. that thought. You're going to get it? No, well, let me let me bring out this real quick. <laughs> now, in okay. Isaiah, 40, Isaiah 40, uh, 42, right? Now, it says, um, behold, my servant. Whom I, I mean, whom I uphold. I mean, it says, "Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my elect, and whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up his, uh, nor lift up to, nor lift, uh, nor lift up his voice to be heard in the street." Now, let's look at something real quick. Now, would you agree that um, when we look at this text, right? We talk about a light unto the Gentiles. There is another scripture we can look at and view it as the same thing as the root of Jesse, right? And uh, what scripture I'm talking about is Isaiah 11. Are you familiar with Isaiah 11? Uh, let's go there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar with that, about when he redeemed Isaiah. Israel for the second time. Right. Look what it says. It says, okay. there shall come forth a rod or a stem of Jesse. Or it does come forth a rod or a stem out of the I mean, there shall come forth a rod stem of Jesse, right? That's what it says. Mm-hmm. And, right. And, 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 and a branch shall grow out of his roots. So mm-hmm. when, we, when we look at that, right, it says, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the, and the fear of the Lord shall be on him. It shall rest upon him, basically. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, when we look at that scripture, watch what it says. It says, it says, hold on. Hold on real quick. Make sure I get this. It's trying to come to a stop here. All right, so now, according to this scripture, right? When we look at this, right? Who do you take this uh, this this root of Jesse to be? Because when you look at verse ten, it says, "And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people." Now, watch what it says. It I said to it shall the Gentiles seek, 
and his rest shall be glorious. So who do you take this Isaiah 11 to be, this root of Jesse or this stem that comes up out of Jesse? Okay, now um, we first read this in Isaiah 11. It said, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. Okay, so we know Jesse to be what? The uh, father of David. Am I correct? Yes. Now, can I ask you just a question? Um, do you believe in the virgin birth? Uh, definitely. Okay, so how can this be Jesus when Joseph not the father? When J- Joseph line came through, um, Joseph line came through David. Um, yeah, came through um, David's line. Well, that's not the when the way father said, "I will establish your seed on the throne." That's 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 why there's a problem with um, when people try and place Jesus there. All right, we can't do that. We know that the root that shall grow, or that stem of Jesse, that can be some. That can't be Jesus. Or I'm not saying that it won't be for the sake of argument because we debate in Isaiah 53. But what I'm trying to say is simply this: it's going to be somebody from. David's seed from David's line. Um, we know after, um, yeah, I, I, I'll leave it at that. Uh, G Con, hold that thought. G Con, hold that thought. We're going to let you answer that question. Try to remember that. Write it down, jot it down. But uh, we've got to dedicate at least 10 minutes to the audience. We have people pressing number one at this time. Again, if you want to call in, you got a question or a comment, you know that number, 319-527-6239. Let's go to the first person with a question, 720-352. You're live on the air. Peace. Oh, hey. peace, peace, peace. Who, who's this? Peace, peace, G-Con. It's Davon. Peace, G-Con. Peace, oh, peace. Peace, 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 <laughs> peace, peace, man. Um, I got, I got uh, two questions. If if Jesus was this sacrifice, would that mean that he redeemed Israel, g You said with that. Hold on real quick. All right, go ahead. I mean, uh, I'm going to ask that in a minute. Okay. Hold on real quick. It, now, you said would that mean that he's uh, – ask act, act, act that again. When Jesus died, when they crucified him, was that the redemption of Israel by him dying on the cross? Um. I would say that that uh, I wouldn't say the the, the a full redemption, but basically, um, you know, um, um, his work as his priesthood, something that has been done, uh, was established there. But I wouldn't say it was a full redemption because they rejected uh, a lot of uh, you know they rejected him and did it to him as they did to the prophet. So I wouldn't say it was his. A full redemption is is yet some things to be fulfilled within uh, the redemptive redemptive so, work. So when so in Luke chapter two verse thirty eight, when Hannah said they was looking for the redemption of Israel, was they looking for a, a partial redemption, like you saying, or a complete redemption? Because in Acts, when they asked them, when you gonna restore the kingdom back to Israel? So right, well, well they was looking at, they was looking for a full redemption, but if they would have been if they would have known the prophecy of Daniel. And uh, other scriptures, they would have known that uh, Christ Daniel was going to come, uh, Daniel chapter 9. If they would have known the prophecy of Daniel's clock, they would have known that also Christ was supposed to come or their king was supposed to come to them on a coat or ass. And not only that is also within the clouds, as uh, as Daniel chapter 7 says, just as well. So they, if you look at the prophecy... Is saying that he's going to come to them before that temple is destroyed, and then the second, and it says he's going to come on a coat's ass. And when one of the texts, then it's all, uh, uh, then it also says that he is going to um, he's going uh, he's going to come within the clouds, with, which uh, Rashi them understand that to be the, uh, uh, the Messiah in uh, Daniel chapter seven. So they, if they would have looked closely at the scripture, they would have seen that he was going to be cut off. And then he and fulfill his uh, priestly duties concerning Isaiah 53, and then also he was going to come back as that king. So he starts off as that prophet that they're looking for, also that priest, and and going before I mean his blood being shed, being innocent, going before the father, and then also coming back later as the king and uh, being recognized before the ancient of days. 
Okay, well, the reason why I ask that, because if you go to Luke 238, it says uh, the, that word for redemption is liberation, deliverance, release in the Old Testament, ransom from imprisonment for debt or from slavery, release from national misfortune, liberation, deliverance, release. So that would make Hannah, she gave a false prophecy if that's what they was waiting on. You see what I'm saying? But I want to I want to move on to my next question. I want to move on to my next question because right, right. I, I want to ask. I much... ask. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to answer that real quick now. Um, because it wasn't a redemption. It doesn't say right, partial right, right. Hold, redemption. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, brother. Hold fast, because you're talking fast, and you don't know what you're talking about. Now, first of all, when you look at it, um, it, there's a circumcision that needs to be done of the heart of the spirit man first. Now, if you look at it, the, the main thing that Israel has done to all of their prophets, as the brother Chris stated, is killed all of them. Is everybody that was righteous, they killed all of them. And not only that, they had Ezekiel laying down on his back for some numbers of days and walking around butt naked, telling them, and they killed him afterwards too. So what I'm saying is this is, when Christ came, to him, came they did the same thing to Christ, and it was prophesied that they were going to cut him off because Israel was wicked as ever. So when you talk about liberation, Liberation is also dealing with the mind just as well. So in order for the kingdom of heaven to come, we got to get the people's mind set together and prepare them for the kingdom. And so when the kingdom come, those that are not prepared will be slaughtered. But let's get their mind together first. So there's also a mindset that needs to be taken care of first, which is the things that Christ was dealing with concerning the heart and the spirit man and man being born again. So just don't look at the word liberation and not think that the mindset is, is not there as well as the literal aspect of it, too. You have to get your mindset together first before you can receive the literal inheritance. Well, they was literally looking for redemption from the Romans, and they didn't get it. So now my next question is, uh, Psalm 49, 7 through 9, can both of, both of y'all elaborate on that, and I'm going to get off. Peace. Can what you is, repeat that again? Like, Psalm 49. Seven through nine. Forty nine, seven through nine. All right. <sighs> okay. It says, um, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious. Let's see what this is talking about. Let's go to the top first. Oh man. Watch what it says. Hear this all you people. Give it. Give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor, together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. Therefore should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my hills shall compass me about. They that trust in their wealth. Now, understand that this subject matter, this is how we exegete passages because this SOG, we plays no games. Watch, what, watch verse 6. It's key in on this, y'all. They that trust in their wealth. So, in other words, whoever trusts in their wealth, watch what he says, and boasts themselves in the multitude of their riches. Watch what he says, verse 7. Those that trust in their wealth, none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. So this is what that's talking about. Anybody that's trusting in or boasting in themselves and their riches, they can't redeem their brother by any means, nor give to God a ransom for him. So it says, for the redemption of their souls is precious and ceaseth forever. So understand verse 8, too, because that's clear. But go ahead. You can answer that, Brother Chris. All right. Um, well, I want to answer that with kind of like a counter, um, with a counter shot. Now, just as quickly as you ran there saying that a man can't be redeemed for your soul, um, in the middle of those passages, sometimes what I know is no, what no, a lot on, of people hold on, hold on, do. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, break, break, Chris. Before you do that, that's not what I said. Okay. I said any No, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm okay. not talking about you. Excuse me okay. if I said that. I'm sorry, bro. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We, I'm trying to keep it peaceful. For the, and for the uh, sake of the debate, I want to get back on Isaiah 53. But, um, um. Many people, like, say, for instance, that he went there, right? And you're letting him know that, okay, that's not what that's talking about, right? You're saying that's not talking about a spiritual sacrifice, right? Then how can we go to Isaiah 53? Let me go to Isaiah 53 um, real quick. 
how can we go to Isaiah 53 and um and in um, verse um, 10 we say yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him he has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering and you all can say that's about Jesus but someone else can come right on along and say okay this is about re redeeming your brother with your soul how can we do that see that's not equal weights and measures and when we read in Torah the Torah only works in equal weights and measures and that's what I have a problem with. And that's why I'm real excited about this Isaiah 53 uh, lesson. You see what I'm saying? Well, well I, 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 and, and I, definitely, I definitely agree because we can look at it and say and, 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 dis, and disqualify uh, with who is the suffering servant. Is it Israel or is it Christ? Now, when you look at the scripture, it's clear. When you look at that scripture, it's clear in Isaiah 53 that Israel um, – they they was deceitful. They was they was definitely deceitful. They had no knowledge, and we can we can we can we can actually uh, use the process uh, of uh, of of elimination and show that Israel was a nation that was from the beginning not righteous mm -hmm. <laughs> and also wicked. Matter of fact, they how how can they how can uh, for for the nations how can for the nations how can the nations how can you say that they suffered for uh, for the sin of the nations when they were suffering really for their own sins? Matter of fact, Israel is in captivity now, cast out into the world because of their own sins, not anybody else's sins. So how Correct. can you say that this is the nation? How can you say that this is the nation speaking here uh, when we see that Israel was suffering for their own sins, let alone how can they suffer from any, anybody else's sins? Okay, repeat that last part. I want to be be sure I, I heard you real clear, brother. Okay, it's Israel. Because you be going hard. <laughs> right, right. Go ahead. Israel was Israel was suffering for that, that. Israel was suffering for their own sins. This is like me saying that. Okay, let me. How can they suffer for somebody else's sins when they were suffering for their own sins? This is like me saying, right. uh, uh, me, me, uh, me, um, whooping, um, uh, my other son, uh, uh. I'm uh my other son. Well, I can't say that, but do you get what I'm saying though? In other words, you you I get what, I get what you're saying. I understand. I understand exactly what you're saying because the Torah itself said a man shall die for his own sins. And me and you was having this discussion about the blood. Remember, ain't no getting right. past that blood. Remember, right? And I agree That's with blood. you. There ain't getting past no blood on that. All right. But when you suffer for your own sins. And Israel being scattered out their land from their homeland. And, yep, I identify as Israel, okay? Um, but that's neither here nor there. When I look around, Israel spilling their blood every day in the street. So there ain't no getting around the blood. That's what I'll continue to say, and I'm going to stand on that. That's a punishment of being scattered because they without their power, which is the most high. You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah. When, we read, when we read verse 10, Hello? Yeah, I apologize. Can you hear me, guys? <clears throat> Hold on one second. Yeah, let me bring in another caller real quick, guys. Uh, let me bring in 601 955. Peace, 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 brother. Uh, peace, uh, peace, G Khan. Peace, brother Chris. How you guys doing? All right, bless, brother. Hey, G Khan, wait, hey, wait to stay on your toes, brother. Man, you caught him on this up and down, man. Good, good. Good, good catch on that one, man. <laughs> For real. Right, most definitely, brother. Most definitely. All right. Uh, let me pull my Bible back, back, back up. Chris Harris. What's up, man? Yes, sir. Hey, can you go back to Isaiah 49 and 7? Uh, yeah, sure. Isaiah 49 and 7. Let's go back there. All right. Yeah, you, you, can, you can read it. Uh, I got a question. No, you read it. You sent me that. Okay, okay. All right, Isaiah 49 and 7. All right, thus said the Lord, right? The Redeemer of right. Israel and his Holy One, to him whom right. despises, to whom the nation abhorred, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship because of the Lord. 
that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he should choose thee. That's, that's when it's saying the Lord, the Redeemer, and the Holy One, that's that's like mm-hmm. two, two different qualifications right there. Like, who is, who do you say is the Holy One? The Most High is our Holy One. What he's doing is, what he's doing is, when he sits up there saying, I am your Holy One and your Redeemer, that's not... Part, he's not making partners with anybody. He's labeling himself, and he's letting you know that I am your set-apart God. There is no other God beside me. He makes it clear. What we try to do sometimes, we try to find Jesus or um, this gentleman can I, can somewhere. I stop you? Can, I, to... can I stop you right there? Go ahead. I, I know you. I sure. know what you're about to say, but when I'm sitting down reading this, I'm not getting right one person from me. I'm getting two different people. It says the Lord, the re, it says mm-hmm. the Lord and his title is what? The Redeemer is and guess what? And his Holy mm-hmm. One. So who is the Holy mm-hmm. One? That's A-N-D, brother. Not A-N or I-N. That's A-N-D. That's oh, somebody okay. Else. So what's the Holy One's name of Israel? The Messiah. Well, does he, does it say Messiah there? It don't. It also don't say, and this is my title to you, because I ain't, I'm not reading it. <laughs> but what I'm trying to sit up there and say, so now you're just going to put the Messiah there when it doesn't say that, right? Because if you, you go to said, Isaiah 43 but, and 15, can we go to Isaiah 43 and 15 right quick? Because mm-hmm. in Isaiah 43, 15, it says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. What, what was that, 43? See what he's... Go to Isaiah 43, Mm -hmm. verse 15, and he says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. But you know what you don't, but you know what you don't see right there in verse 15? A and D, brother. You don't see the N there. You see the N in 49 and 7. You don't see the N. Well, he's saying, and I'm your Holy One. When he's saying, and your Holy One, (laughs) listen. You don't listen. Listen. You're trying to sit I'm up there. There's bro. many precepts I can take you to. There's many precepts I can take you to. But he's saying, I'm your holy one. What version are you reading out of, if you don't mind me asking? The, K- the KJV, brother. I'm right here where you are. Okay. Bro. 15. You don't right, have well, it, that in, the Tanakh, in the Tanakh, it says, I am the Lord, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. And that's translated from the Hebrew. There is no and. He's told you already that there, that there is no equating partners with him. He tells you that time and time again. But what Christianity has done to us, it has blinded you. And you try to put this man somewhere where he's not. He said, I have sworn by myself and will not relent. Find Yeshua's name in there in the Hebrew and call us back. G-Con, I, I said I had a question for G-Con as well. Uh, okay. G-Con, brother, real quick, real simple. John 4 and 22. Uh, is that right? Uh, let me find John out. John 4 and 22? Yeah, yeah, 4 and uh, 22. I read it for you. I read it for you. It says, ye worship, ye know not. What? We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews now. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Who is the uh, who is the salvation of the Jews, brother? Okay, now when we talk about salvation, what type of I salvation he was talk, is he hold talking on, hold about? On, hold on, Chris, because I, I he was talking about he, he was asking me a question. Oh, he's talking to you, my fault. Go ahead, go this, ahead. Yeah, I'm talking to G because this verse does coincide with that 49 and 7. That's what I'm missing. For I need to go to that. Go back to it. It does coincide with that verse. But um, who, who is the salvation of the Jews, brother? Uh, he's talking about the Jews. He says, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews or from the Jews, basically. In other words, you know, um, we see that it's coming from the Jews, you know, uh, offering it to the people or those that are believers. But uh, if you look at it, there's a, there's a, a but there. It says, uh, but the hour cometh and now is. Watch what it says. When the true worshipers should worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. 
So in other words, you know, Christ is looking and saying, this woman asked him, she says, uh, our fathers worship in this mountain, but you tell us that we ought to worship in Jer Jerusalem. And so Christ tells us, he says, yes, yeah, salvation is from the Jews or of the Jews, but watch what he says. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers should worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seek of right. to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. So Christ just told her two things is going to happen. First of all, this is, he told her, uh, when you go up a little bit higher, you ain't going to worship in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. He he, That's a prophetic prophecy saying that this, this temple is going to be destroyed, and also we're going to run you up out this mountain. The true worshipers are going to worship Christ in spirit and truth, and that's my answer to that. Okay, can I get on that one? Yes. Okay, I want to go back to the gentleman. He said he's reading the King James Version. Well, I'm looking online at the King James Version. It says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, and sea before thee. That's Isaiah 43 and 3. I do not see the word and there. And when we took it to the Tanakh, he described himself, um, he described himself the Holy One of Israel, and your Redeemer. So I don't know what y'all seeing, but um, I understand. But, but brother Chris, brother Chris, real quick, uh, brother Chris, you have to agree. You got to respect that and that's right there, where it say and the Holy One. That's making. Two I'm reading it. Two I'm, I'm looking right at it. I'm looking there. I I'm don't see about, the I'm word and. The 49, I'm, I'm talking about in the forty-nine and seven. Okay, but all right, now let me ask you a question. Why would all of a sudden in, in, in 43 one. and 3, there's no and, and then all of a sudden, and, and he's describing himself as one, and then all of a sudden in 49 and 7, let's go to 49 and 7 because I only want to be fair. Um, when we go to 49 and 7, Isaiah 49 and 7, it's, it, it does the same thing. So you, you see what I'm saying? Real quick, I'm going to make this real last comment. You don't have to answer. You don't have to respond. But you need okay. to tell me. Tell Right, because in the verse above, verse six, it's saying, you know, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. So you mean to tell me Israel that stoned and killed all their prophets is going to be a light to the Gentiles, brother? What was what was um, what was um, Israel's original mission, and where did the law say it was going to go forth out of? It said it was going to come forth out of Zion. Am I right? Who going to be giving that? Who going to be giving that law? Who's going to be giving it? Israel. Oh. Who's going to be giving the law? Israel. It clearly tells the you same, that. The, the same Israelites that stoned their prophets going to gonna give forth the law. That, that, that ain't righteous, brother. But what I'm trying to sit up there, didn't the Most High said, my mercy is forever and enduring and everlasting? Doesn't he say that? See, what you're trying to do, one more time, you're trying to take, <laughs> when, you, when you equate a partner, because I want to get back to Isaiah 53, when you equate a partner with the Father, you're taking his power out his hand, and you're giving it to somebody else, and he said, I will not change. I share my glory with no one. Uh, I apologize what you were Chris. <laughs> but uh, let's get back into the dialogue. We're going to come back to the audience. Though. We're going to come back to you guys, so stand by or press number one. But uh, let's get back into Isaiah 53. Go ahead. Yeah, All right. I, I want to so, say uh, this real quick. Uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead, you guys. Go ahead. Uh, right, so, I want to. Uh, I, I want to. Um, mine gonna be kind of lengthy, so go ahead. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, you, okay, yeah, okay. Isaiah fifty-two and twelve, right? Because this is where this is where we, where we started. This is where all the um, confusion started. It says, "For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward." It says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. And many, I think you're turning pages. You got, you might have to mute your mic because you're turning pages. Oh, my time. fault. Mute me, Sal. Mute me, Sal. Uh, no, you might not. You just mute yourself. You can just because you can come in any time. If Sal okay. mute you, then you'll be. All right. It says, okay, cool. As many were astonished at thee, his vassage was so merit marred more than any man. And it's far more than the sons of man. Man, 
says, so shall he sprinkle many nations. The king shall shut their mouths at him. Now, notice this. You know, Chris basically is saying that the nations is, is, is going to be speaking here when we get to Isaiah. But it just said, here it says, so shall he sprinkle many nations. The king shall shut their mouths at him. We know that the Messiah, according to Daniel chapter 7 and also Daniel chapter 2, is going to sprinkle many nations. And his facets is going to be marred by what he's going to do to those nations just as well. It says, for that which had not been told them shall not they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Now, let's look at 53 verse 1, because here's where we start getting to the nitty-gritty. You know, um, and this is a continuation. There's, there's no chapters here, so this is a continuation from uh, 50, uh, 52, 13. It says, uh, 12, it says, who have believed our report? Now, he, 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 the Jews insinuate here that this is talking about the nations are asking, who have believed our report, right? To whom is the mm-hmm. arm of the Lord revealed, right? Mm-hmm. He, he, they are saying that this is the nations that are saying this. It says the Lord, I mean, to whom the Lord revealed. It says, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form or no comeliness. And when we shall see him, so right here, this is when it says, and when we shall see him, this is basically the nations asking, when we shall see him. I mean, this is something that I have never heard of, of this nation just speaking in this Bible like this and speaking as an individual. This is an individual speaking about his people, supposedly about his nations. Now watch this. And I'm just giving you their, their, their viewpoint on it. So, you know, when, when it's time for me to go through this, then you can see that why it's not correct. It says, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. This is the nations talking, or the, you know, he is despised and rejected of men. In other words, Israel is despised and rejected of men, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it, as, and and we hid as were our faces from him. So the nations hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. The nations esteemed Israel not. Surely. He has borne our griefs. In other words, Israel has borne the griefs and carried our sorrows and carried the sorrows of the nations. Yet did the nation esteem him stricken. In other words, this, this guy who's ever writing this from the nations, he's saying, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. In other words, Israel was smitten of God and afflicted. Now, now remember this. Israel was afflicted of God for their own sins. Uh, sins. Remember Deuteronomy 28 states that the curses that was going to come upon them because of their sins. And the Lord really had no pleasure in doing so, but he took pleasure in doing so when they continued to sin. Now watch what it says. But he was wounded for our transgression. And he was bruised for our iniquities. In other words, when you read this translation in the Stone Tanakh or the JPS, I mean, they do a dazzle with this. It's so ridiculous. You can tell the Jews are full of filth and slime and ridiculous, man, on how they translate this text. Sir. It's sloppy, the sloppiest okay. i ever seen. And it, the commentary uh-huh. is so ridiculous because that's all it is, it's commentary. They say, well, we translate in the Hebrew like this, but they're not translating it properly. It's ridiculous. So this is what it says. Mm-hmm. But he was wounded for our transgressions, which is the is uh, the na- uh, the nation of Israel was ru- wounded for the transgressions of the nations, right? Or they might say, well, he uh, 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 because of he was wounded with our transgressions, uh, our our um, you know, so uh, some stupid like that. It says the chast- chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So in other words, the nations are healed by the foolish doing and the uh, uh, Israel being scattered away, basically. Them being scattered away by their foolish doings, the nations are healed. When have you okay. ever seen the nations healed by Israel doing what they're doing? Not so. Has not happened. Will not happen. Matter of fact, the nations will be judged Israel because of uh, 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 Israel, uh, they took their, they punished Israel more than what they were supposed to. So the nations are going to actually be judged on what they did to Israel, not healed. So it says, and we like sheep have gone astray. In other words, it's saying that these people are sheep, they have gone astray. The nations have gone astray. 
and uh, Israel, I mean, uh, 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 and, and, and they, they sheep going astray. Now, I don't know how Israel ain't going astray, but we know that the nations went astray here, so to speak. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. So, in other words, the Lord has laid on Israel the iniquity of, uh, uh, of all the nations, basically. So, Israel is bearing the iniquity of these nations, so to speak. So, I'm going to let Chris go on, but just look how carried away this can actually get. <laughs> Israel is... <laughs> Israel, <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, y'all, look. You talking about I got to carry... Come and let Chris carry it all. Hey, take it, brother. You got it? <laughs> I'm listening. Right. <laughs> So Israel, so Israel, this is this this is Israel. Now let's just imagine this. I'm already trashy and nasty, right? Right. I'm full of trash. Right. I got a bag of trash. I'm walking down okay. the street, right? I'm the trash man, right? I'm already trashy. I'm filthy, right? All right. I'm telling somebody that I'm gonna clean them up, this and that, right? And I'm already trashy. And this is what this is looking like. In other words, I have no position to carry anything. Especially when I'm already nasty and filthy, I got a beam in my eye. So when we look at this, this is what the Jews are telling you. They telling you that this, the, the, the Israel is burned the iniquity of the nations, right? Well, that's not true, right? At all. Okay. The Israel is just okay. filthy as the nations there. But go ahead, brother Chris. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to do is, as um, I like the way you um, characterized um, Isaiah 53, um, I like the way you did that. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I be taking notes when you be talking. Don't think I don't notice what you be doing, too. Not chasing nobody. I get you. I like it when you do that. But what I want to do is I want to discuss the context um, and the precepts that are right in our face about um, Isaiah 53. So, um, um, so I would like to start at verse 10. Can you read that for me, please? All right, verse 10. Let's jump there. Right. All right, it says, um, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put mm-hmm. him to grief. When thou shalt right. sow, I mean, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Okay, he good. Shall see now. His feet. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Um, let me see. Um, yeah, you continue to read. I'm sorry. Go ahead. He shall see. He shall see his seed. Hold on. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Okay. Now, when we um two things before I introduce the precept to that or the um some context for that, so we can get some better understanding here. Um, as we see that, we say it pleads. The Lord. So we know that this is a past tense verb being placed there. Can you agree with that? Um, yeah, we definitely can agree with that, but that doesn't make – we see past tense verb being used on prophecies. And Good. Prophecies. I'm glad so you, you brought that up. No, verb on You're right. You're right. And we know it's a past – we know it's a prophecy when it is stated, and it shall come to pass, and in that day. Do you agree with me on that? That's how we know it's yeah. a prophecy that's going to happen. Okay. Now, when we read this um, in verse 10, I see the same type of language being used um, that I see in Deuteronomy verse 28, chapter 28, verse 63. Um, can, I, can we go there? Yes. All right, cool. Boy, you got me. You're making me kind of sharp with this sword today. Let's get it. <laughs> Deuteronomy right, chapter what again, brother. <laughs> okay. What Deuteronomy, what Deuteronomy chapter uh, what? Um, because um, I want to reframe this. It says, "Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Um, he has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin." Okay. Um, now let's go to um, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse sixty-three, and it says, "And it shall be." That just as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to nothing, and you shall be plucked from the land which you go to possess. So I, I get how everybody puts Jesus there, okay, or the Messiah there, because I do expect the Messiah to come. That's why I don't like just, ah, uh, that's not him. Okay, I try to get understanding on a 360-degree uh, um, um, stage on that, right? So 
So we see him laboring in that, saying, yeah, it's going to please me to just um, do this to you also, as it says right here in verse 10. Now, when we go to um, also, I would like to precept, show you something in um, the first verse, four verses of Isaiah 53. It said, who has believed our report? Whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Now, I'm going to go to Exodus 6 and 6, and I'm going to read. Just walk with me for a minute. Um, just listen to me for a minute. And you can cut me if you don't agree, but I'm reading straight from the Tanakh or the Torah. Okay, when it's um, in Exodus um, 6 and 6 tells you, therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Um, out of the burdens from the Egyptians, I will res rescue you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and great judgment. Okay? Um, um, so we see right there, that was the first report. You see what I'm saying? When we see in the second verse, we say, this is real. When it says in the second verse, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, all you got to do is turn to Isaiah 5 and 7. Isaiah 5 and 7 tells you who this tender plant is. Right? Now it says, for the vineyard of the Lord. You said, you said Isaiah the 5 and 7? You said Isaiah 5 and 7? Isaiah 5 and 7. 7. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, well, actually, Isaiah 11 tells you who the, uh, who the uh, plant is when it says the, the Hebrew word there is Sheresh, the word root there. And now uh, when you look at it, that's what that's talking about. And it says that that Sheresh should go up, grow up out of a dry ground. And so when you look at Isaiah 11, it's talking about it has the same word, the Sheresh. Okay, it, cool. Uh, the, uh, but let's go where it, was, where it was told earlier, because me and you both know that the prophets ain't no hypocrite. Okay, right. so let's go to Isaiah five and um five and um verse seven. To that one caller, I want to tell him thank you. All right, but let's go to Isaiah verse five verse seven. It says, "For the vineyard, he is describing who his vineyard is." Okay, this is the um Isaiah talking this now. It says, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant plant. I wanted to take you here first so I can take you to uh, Isaiah 11 and agree with you on that one. We, we can agree on that. We're just talking about our Isaiah champ. Uh, Isaiah 53 talking about um, Israel. Let's go. It says, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if our great faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Let's go to um, let's go to precepts on that. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter fifteen. All right, let's go to Ezekiel chapter fifteen. I, I ain't gonna take all day with this, cause I know you you licking your chops. You ready to get back at me on something? Uh, <laughs> Ezekiel chapter fifteen, one through eight. It says, "Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying." Son of man, how is the wood of the vine better than any other wood? The vine branch, which is among the trees of the forest, is the wood taken from it to make any object, or can men make a peg from it to hang on any vessel on? Instead, it is thrown into the fire for fuel. He's telling you what he's going to do to his own vine. Let's continue. The fire devours both ends of it, and the middle is burned. It is useful for any work. Is it useful for any work? He's asking a question. Indeed, when it was whole, no object could be made from it. How much less will it be useful for any work when the fire has devoured it and it is burned? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, like the wood of the vine among the trees of the forest, which I have given to the fire for the few, so will I give up the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will set fire, I'm sorry, and I will set my face against them. They will go out from, from one fire, but another fire shall, fire shall devour them. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I set my face against them. This, this is about Israel. You go to Nehemiah 4 and 4. If we go to Nehemiah 4 and 4, let's go to Nehemiah 4 and 4 um, here. Man, I got to go to Nehemiah 4 and 4. I'm, I'm reading out of a little itty-bitty Bible here, so excuse me. Let me just uh, pull it up on my computer. Uh, can you go to Nehemiah 4 and 4 for me? All right. And then I want to address some of the stuff that you said earlier, but let me go to Nehemiah. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I don't want to go, go all over the place and you can't address it. Right. It says, um, hear, O oh, hear, oh, our God, for we are despised, and turn, I mean, and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover so not. So we see right now. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. 
Ahead, no, no, I just wanted you to do Nehemiah 4 and 4. All right? Um, but if you do 5, it says, And cover not their iniquity, and let their sin be blotted out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Okay? So we're we, we, we seeing all this going on um, in the first four verses. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, i got to conclude, if I'm a child of Israel, and you know in Israel, um, you know what I'm saying? You got your griot, people that tell the stories. You got your scribes. You got your priests. They there telling these stories on the Shabbat, on um, on high holy days. They telling these stories. So if somebody comes along to me and says, "Oh, this whole book is about this one man," and I've been hearing people saying it's about me, I'm gonna be looking at that man like, "Huh?" Scratching my head. The well, let me ask you a question real quick. Up, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, now, when Israel fails, okay, when Israel fails. What do they rely on when they fall? What, 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 in other words, w- you know, when we look at Israel, Israel fell as a group, as a whole. One right. of the things that we see that they rely on is the blood. Would you agree to that? You know I agree with that. Come on now. <laughs> so, 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 so really to be honest, you know, when we look at that, where Israel, it's like you're, we're running a race. Right. And, okay. and, 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 you know, when you're running a race, you, you know, and I'm, I'm going to put it the way, you know, um, you know, uh, Michael Brown put it because I think he used a good analogy. We're a team, mm-hmm. right? We're running a race, right? right. Now right. let's say Fence, you fail, right? But I'm still one of your teammates. I finish it off and we get okay. the so we have to look at that like that. In other words, Israel failed. Clearly, we can see that. But okay. Christ, the Moshiach, he finished it all. And therefore, Israel gets the victory. And not only do Israel get the victory, he accomplishes what Israel could not do. In other words, when we, when we even look at the tabernacle, Israel blood ain't going on the altar. But that innocent blood that's being shed is going on the altar because that is the fulfillment that's going on or after you have done the law and when you can't, when you, when, when, I mean, when you have, when you're, when you're completing the law and then you miss the mark, the blood is there to continue you on. In other words, the blood goes on the mercy seat. Even the sins of the priest have to be, uh, uh, have to be uh, uh, dealt with just as well too. The blood has to deal with that. Now let's look at something real quick. Uh, we have to disqualify Israel as the suffering servant. And I, I'm gonna oh, give come you one on. alternate. Right, I, I'm, I'm gonna give you one alternate route, and you're gonna say I'm gonna lead you to one alternate route, and you're gonna say the righteous remnant, and we're gonna deal with that. But I have to push you into this area now. Let's look at this, right? Number one is it says that the suffering servant has no violence. That's the first thing. Let's look at this Isaiah 53 and 9, and he made his grave in his death because he had done okay. no violence. That word there is Hamas. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth, right? Now watch this. Isaiah 59 and 6. Talking about Israel. Listen to this. Their webs shall, be, shall not become garments. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity. And the act of violence, that Hebrew word, their Hamas, is in their hands. That's, that's number one. So Israel. Hey, tell me that word again. Tell me that word again. That word is Hamas there. Oh, that's like that. Yep. Uh, that's that foreign um, terrorist group. Okay, go ahead. I didn't know that. Okay, uh, go right, ahead. Right, right. And so look, the second thing is this is, number two, it says, Isaiah 53 and 9, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in right. his death because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Well, let's look at this. We can take it to Isaiah 53. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Can 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 we can we stay right there? Let me let me get off this one. Can we one stay right there? Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay, let me get. It says, "For your hands are defiled with blood, fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have muttered perverseness." Now I'm looking at deception and deceit right there. So Israel is disqualified just on two things: deceit and also violence. Israel has done violence, oh. and they have deceit. Go ahead. Okay, now, first of all, then, if you're saying that he has done no first thing first, um, Isaiah 40, 
45, verse 22 to 25 tells us what? The Father tells him to look to him, all you ends of the earth, and be saved, right? Okay, because I want to stay on point. I want to try to answer everything that you just dropped on me. Oh, man, I hate it when you do this. Uh, <laughs> I want to answer everything you just dropped on me, okay? Um, Isaiah 45, 22 to, through 25, the Father says, look to me, all you ends of the earth, and be saved. He said, look to him. Okay, he didn't say look to nobody else. He said, look to him. All right. Now, also in Isaiah 55, verse seven, this is what it reads. It says, let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. Okay, that's pardon from sins. Micah seven, Micah seven, um, 18 through 20. Right. I don't like reading scriptures that fast because sometimes people can't follow. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like to uh, really take my time. So um. Uh, Y'all forgive me if I'm reading too fast, but it, um, we, we just read in um, Isaiah 55 and 7 that you could be pardoned from your sin. But then when we go to Micah, let me turn to uh, Micah because we got time. Um, let's what do you mean you could be pardoned from your sin? In what way? What, what are you talking about? Like, about what? Well, no. Okay. Now, you're saying that Israel, we, me and you both agree that Israel is scattered, right? Yes. There's okay. a portion of Israel is there, in, uh, that I believe is in, is in uh, Israel now, uh, which is which um, is the nation Israel, and then you got the scattered. Okay. Um, now you know that's another conversation from another day. Yeah. But I agree. I, I think that uh, Israel is not in its land because the people that are over there they weren't pulled from any of those countries in um, Isaiah chapter 11. And me and you, me and you aren't stupid. And <laughs> me and you know that. Okay, and we know that me, me, that group of people walking walk between African Kemet and African Canaan, living in the wilderness. We know that. All right. right. I, I, and, um, I, 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 did, I had to disagree with that, but um, uh, you know, I. That's another just, story like, for another that's, time, man. You can right, dialogue right, on right. that. Right. Okay. Cool. Um. Now let's go to um Micah chapter seven, verse eighteen through twenty, because I want to talk about um being forgiven for sin. It says, who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion on us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Okay, um, verse 20, thou will perform the truth to Jacob and mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn to their fathers from days of old. Now, I want to say something real fast. You said when you were saying that he didn't have any deceit in his mouth. Well, Jesus said that John was Elijah, right? But then when yeah, the Pharisees spirit, came yes. to Elijah, he said, I'm not Elijah. Right. So do we have a mistranslation? Uh, uh, no, or no, do Jesus we have a tamper with scriptures? Was... I don't, I'm just giving you all a way out on this now. He, right. said he said that. he said that he was he said that he was Elijah in spirit, basically. In other words, if you look at it, Elijah uh, Elisha or uh, Eliyah, you know, when Eliyah Eliyahu. went up, he gave yeah, he gave he gave Elijah Elijah Elisha, he gave him a double portion of his spirit. So in other words, right. Jesus recognized John as coming in the spirit of Elijah. In other words, the thing that the, the, the same manner what Elijah, Eli Eliyahu was doing was the same thing that John was doing, you know, uh, for warning the people of Christ coming and, and, and baptizing people for the remission of sins. So that's what that means. In other words, he came in the spirit. So that's what the text says. But to answer your question about, um, it says, for they shall cry. This is uh, Isaiah 19 and uh, 20. It says, and it shall be Go for ahead. a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. They shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Okay. Now, this is the Lord saying that he's going to send Israel, I mean, not Israel, he's going to send the Egyptians a savior. Now, the reason why I brought this out is this is because um, how God say that he is the savior and there is none alone, uh, one that comes as a savior is working in the power and spirit of God. As Christ said himself, he says, I come in my Father's name. And not only that, we know only of, I mean, we don't know of the nature of God fully, but we do know 
how God uh, manifests himself by either his word or we've seen that he manifests himself several times by what we call the angel of the Lord in the uh, Old Testament. So what I'm saying is this is, is that how God manifests himself or his nature um, does not neglect the fact that he's, he's still um, the one true God. We don't know. We, he can say that he is the one true God, and it can be saying, as it stated there, the Hebrew word, which is yakad, or one, or unity, as a unit, but still be all in all or one. So it's, it, it doesn't express the nature of God. In other words, if Christ says, you only know that he's God because of the word that reveals him. You would have never known he was God had he never communicated to you. So how God reveals himself or his image is by his word. I hope that you can understand, you know. All right, Chris, hold that response. Write it down. You know, whatever you want to say, just write it down. We're going to get back to you. Again, we've got to dedicate some time to the audience, 10, 15 minutes. Let's get some of these callers. Again, the number is 319-527-6239. If you call it, just press number one, and we'll add you to the conversation. Let's go to 757-752. You're on the air. Yeah, Brother Sal, Brother Chris, Brother g Khan. How y'all doing this evening? Peace, peace. peace. Brother Bless. Peace, brother. How you doing? Okay. Peace, bless. I'm doing all right. This is uh, Eugene, the truth seeker. Um, Shalom. The way I see what, what y'all are talking about, it seems like both of y'all are, are correct as far as I'm concerned. The only problem is when you leave Christ out, that's where, uh, that's where you get mixed up. Because first of all, uh, I know you, I'm hearing every, you, know, you guys talking about how Israel is the savior of the world, and uh, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that Christ is the savior of the world. Uh, but the first thing is Israel... You can say Israel will be a savior of the world, but it's not the whole, the whole, you know, Israel conglomeration, so to speak, everybody that was considered Israel. The Israel that's going to be the savior of the world are those that God elects. God's elect will be Israel because the uh, Bible states that uh, uh, if you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heir to the father. Uh. Okay. Um, sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> upset you on that, but you know that's scripture. No, no, no. I'm not upset. I was yawning. That's all. I'm sorry. <laughs> not, not you. Okay, you. Really? It's just getting late. No, man. no, no. It's not you. I was okay. actually yawning. I'm sorry. <laughs> not you. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Well, mute, mute your mic then. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, but basically, what what has to happen first? Okay. First of all, when you talk, look at uh, this, uh, Isaiah 53. It's talking about he will do this or he will do that. He will do this and that. Well, if you going, whenever you talk about Israel, or whenever the Bible talks about Israel, it doesn't refer to Israel as a he. It refers to yes, Israel. Yes, it does. Yes, no, it, it does. does. I have to cut you on that no, one. It does. It does. No, you Can you turn to Hosea now. chapter 8, verse 3, please? Hosea chapter 8, verse 3. Hosea chapter 8, verse 3, please. Yeah. Hold on, give me give me a second here. Sorry, I'm taking so long there. Where the heck is it at? Uh, you want to go ahead and read it so I don't take up too much time? Okay, I'm gonna read it for you. Um, I'm gonna read Hosea uh, chapter uh, ten, verse one, first, as it uh, as it reads. And it says, and I'm going to read a couple of them for you. It says, Israel was a spreading vine. He brought forth fruit for himself as his, his fruit increased. He built more altars and his land prospered. He adorned his sacred stones. Hosea 7 and 10. Israel's arrogance testifies against him. Now, I know, um, let's continue. But despite all this, he does not return to the Lord, his God, or search for him. Now, we know Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. We know Isaiah um, chapter 44, I mean, sorry, Isaiah chapter 45, verses um, 22 to 25. 
the father begs Israel time and time again to return to him. Okay. All right. Well, let me make myself a little more clear. You're talking about the nation Israel. Okay. But when it talks about, when, when the Bible talks Israel being a woman, it's talking about Christ's bride. It's talking, you said he, uh, let's see, I got it. Can right you show here. me that? You're going to have to show me that. Yeah, I'll show you. Uh, he says that, uh, well, I just had it here too. But he talks about, um, you see, he likened unto Zion unto a delicate and comely woman. And he also uh, talks about his uh, Jerusalem coming coming from heaven like a, uh, a bride adorned for her husband. It also talks about how Jesus is going to come uh, he's coming for a bride without a uh, spot or wrinkle. You see, the body of Now, Christ, can you, can you, I, and, I hear what you're telling me, but can you give me the scriptures? Okay, do you know the scriptures? I'm reading into, I'm re- see, you call up um, the day before last night, and you take up a lot of time. So I'm going to just bow out and let, G, um, let you uh, go with G-Con. Shalom, brother. Okay, dokie. Uh, you, uh, you can respond, um, and then you go to the next caller. Yeah, you can respond. Uh, did you have a question you want to ask me, brother? Uh, because I, I do have to agree with him because Israel is can be also called a he just as well, but uh, that's why we're trying to make a distinguishment here, and I think that he's already admitted it in Isaiah. Uh, uh, there are more than uh, one servant in Isaiah, and so uh, what, what, what we're trying to do is, is make a distinguishment between Isaiah 53, between uh, Israel which has failed, which has which has, has much Hamas violence, and also is deceitful. So I'm trying to lean him towards the um, the righteous uh, servant and let him go that route, or uh, the uh, righteous remnant, and which he brought out some things earlier, and uh, which is in the later times when God will cause Israel to be victorious and uh, turn all godliness away from Israel. So that's what we're doing now. Is just trying to rule out that if you have a question for me, you know that I, you know I can answer that or whatever. Something else. Well, I was just I was just trying to make a comment uh, on the fact that uh, it, it, to me I look at it as you both being right, except for the fact that when you, you leave out Christ, that's problem is because first, first Christ is pulling is going to pull out his elect, the, the ones that are going to rule the nation. Okay, but first it has to go from Christ to Israel. And that's basically, I look at it as being really spiritual, Israel, because of the, 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 the scripture that I say where it says, if you are Christ, you're Abraham's seed and heir to the promise. That's why all of literal Israel will not be, are not considered Israel. It's only those that accept the, the, uh, the Savior Christ that are, are considered spiritual Israel. Those are God, his elect, and he's going to uh, um. use them, he's going to use them to, uh, to pretty much educate the rest of, of the nation. So it's going to go through Christ, then it's going to go through Israel, and then the whole world. When it's all, I, I said the scripture a couple of days ago, it says, "When His judgment is in the earth, all the inhabitants shall know righteousness." Well, it's an order as to right. how He's doing. It's an order how He's right, doing. Right, definitely. It. Nope. And the I definitely there's none. Go ahead. And I definitely agree with you. There's definitely an order on how He does things, and uh, I think that after we see Genesis chapter 12. Uh, Genesis chapter 11, uh, shortly at that, after that in Genesis chapter 12, we see Abraham coming out of from Ere of the Chaldeans, and basically God uh, using a power of attorney or a nation, uh, is to, he's establishing a nation through a covenant. But what's very important there is is that um, from the get-go when Adam, we just take it all the way back, we don't even got to put Israel in it, we can just, I can get them in the first chapters of the Bible. You know, when when you look at Israel and uh, I mean, look at uh, uh, Adam and uh, Adam when he sinned, the first uh, death that took place was, um, as far as physically, was God making coats of skin. Something had to die in order to cover at in, in order to cover uh, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve uh, took it upon themselves to resolve a problem, which could not be resolved in the manner that they did it, and so God took the initiative uh, to bring forth for something that was innocent and shed his blood to cover them. So the concept of shedding innocent blood is already always there from the beginning. And right after that, the redactor, which is uh, uh, which was possibly could be Moses or someone else who uh, brought forth the information, 
goes on to the next chapter, which is Genesis chapter four, dealing with um, offerings. And so the, the 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 concept of blood or blood being shed or innocent blood being shed in 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 in, in, uh, in the world of Adam is due to his sin. So we can trace it all the way back of historically, biblically, of these people uh, shedding innocent blood for their sin. That one may say, uh, as the uh, Jews try to say, well, that's not for that. It's not a sin offering. Well, uh, what they shedding blood for in, from the get go anyway? Why are they shedding blood? Why are they doing that? I mean, so 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 what I'm saying is this: is, is that Christ is the subject of all rituals and rites that we see in the biblical text, starting from Adam all the way to we see up until now. So you can't even get to the mercy seat of behind the veil without the blood. So it's pointing to Christ. Okay, can, can, well, can, I, can I interrupt that for one second? Can I, I'm sorry, Go can ahead. I interrupt that for one second, though? Go ahead. Okay, um, can you um, read to the gentleman um, Jeremiah 31, 30 through 34? Because he sat up there and said that it's all about spiritual Israel. And last time I checked, Paul wasn't no prophet or nothing. So can you read that? Because now we got uh, a problem. Jeremiah 31 and 34. Yeah, get him with that for me, uh, G-Con. 31 and 34. It says... No, and they 31 versus no 30 through 34. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. It says... Yeah. Um, it says, but everyone should die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth should be set on edge. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand and brought to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, will I put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall, te- and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, for the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I, remember, I will remember their sin no more. Okay, so as we can see right there, he's already said the new covenant is going to be made with um, Israel and Judah. So us talking about replacing um, um, Israel and Judah with a spiritual uh, Israel and Judah, that's mentioned nowhere in the Tanakh, nor did any of the prophets teach that. As a matter of fact, right, right, but, in the but, book but, of Genesis... Uh, under, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get it right quick. Let me get it right, 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 right quick, G-Con, right. and I'm going to let you get back to it. As a matter of fact, in the book of Genesis, when Abraham interceded for Sodom, he was teaching Sodom and Gomorrah Torah. Therefore, that made him a mediator for them with the Father. And he pleaded with the Father not to destroy um, Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Most High clearly said, I will not destroy a city for, for the sake of ten people. Now, if Jesus was so righteous... How come he had 12 disciples and Jerusalem was still destroyed? I'll let y'all continue. All right, family, we got to take some more of these callers. We've got to take some more of these callers. We're going to take maybe one or two more, and then we're going to get right back into the dialogue again. Today's show is entitled Isaiah 53. The number is 319-527-6239. Let's get another caller here. 919 live on air. Shalom Lachal, um, Shalom to all. Um, this is Yochanan. Peace and blessings, brother. brother. Thank you. Big this brother, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? You doing? Uh, all right. Yes, sir. So, um, I want to run through real quick and tear down a lot of these lies and distortions that um, G-Con has put out there. First and foremost, Isaiah 52.15, um, you said that um, it says that he will sprinkle many nations. That is not what it says. The word is yes, Zah. It is a his still three third person masculine singular, and it's in this perfect form, meaning that the act is perfected. It means um, to uh, startle or to surprise. So what it's saying is that the servant will surprise or shock many nations. That's why the nations shut their mouth, just like if you jump out from around the corner and scare somebody. That's 52.15. 53.15, or excuse me, 53.5, you said that, um, it was um, that they were wounded for, and the translations were wrong, and this, that, and the other. Okay, there's, I'll give you a proper translation. The mem preposition is attached to the word. The mem preposition means from, not for. It means, so what it's literally saying is wounded from or because of um, their rebellion, and he was crushed 
from or because of their iniquity. Um, the words are mipshayinu and um, what's this one if I can see? Meao no te uh, meao no te I can hardly see the words. Um, so these are both from that mem that m, m sound that you hear at the beginning of those words means from. It's attached to those verbs. You also said that Israel did violence and um, Israel did deceit. Israel indeed did do violence and did do deceit. Um, however, if you turn over to uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 13, um, it says, The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. So the righteous remnant isn't, isn't doing it. It's not talking about all of Israel. Isaiah 53 is not talking about all of Israel. Wait, hold, hold that. You said Zephaniah what again? You said Zephaniah what again? Zephaniah what again? Zephaniah chapter, 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 again? Uh, all right, chapter, chapter verse 13. Right. Now, hold on. Let's hold that. Hold that right there. Now, watch this. Mm-hmm. Now, let's look at the time of this. Let's look at the time. And you are correct about uh, about uh, sprinkle. You are you are correct about that. Now, watch what it says. Let's look at the time. Zephaniah chapter 3. It says, I will also leave in the midst of the uh, afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. It says, the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. But they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Now watch what it says. Let's look at the time frame of when all of this happening, because um, um, you, you, I, I don't know when you're thinking it's going to be, but this is going to be when the God basically come and reign. And turn every turn everything uh, um, uh, away from them. I mean, turn everything towards them during that time to purify these people. Let's look at it. Let's jump down a little bit because it says um, it says it says sixteen. Now look what it says in sixteen, verse sixteen. In that day, it should be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hand be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee. With joy, he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful from the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of of it was a burden. Behold, at that time, watch what he says. I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that haunteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again. Notice he keeps saying at that time, even the time that I will gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth, and I will turn back your captivity before your eyes, said the Lord. So in other words, when Israel will be found without, hold on. So when Israel will be found without, I mean, when, when God will uh, deal with Israel to get that deceit up out of them is when he reveals himself to them and bring them back into the land. That's what that's talking about. It's not talking about now. Absolutely. And I agree. I agree. I agree 110%. I agree 110%. Your comment was that the Israel has done violence and whatnot. Pretty much everything that you just read, everything that you just read didn't deal with anything that I just said. Absolutely nothing I just said because I don't agree. This is, this is, this is in the future. I agree with that. 110%. 110%. But guess what? The most I've always kept a righteous written. But if I can move on, because I know that my time is limited, and before you try to say I'm speaking to me, right, right, that's fine. But hold on, hold on. Before you. Hold on, hold on. Just to deal with that point, because you talked about a righteous remnant, right? And you said that mm-hmm. Israel is being talked about there. Now, let me ask you mm-hmm. a question. When Isaiah went before the Lord, what did he say when he went before the Lord? This is a righteous remnant, right? What did Isaiah say? When he went before the Lord, he said, whoa, it is me. I am undone, right? And he was unclean, right? So if Isaiah, which is a righteous remnant, which was put to death by Israel, because Israel killed all their prophets, how much more is this righteous remnant you talking about? And is they innocent? Did they die for their own sin? And again, that deals with nothing with what I just said. You're, you're going around, you're going around the elbow to get your behind. You're not dealing with anything that I said. But anyway, I did before, I'm cut off, before I'm cut off, let's jump over to Jeremiah chapter 30. Um, I'm going to read verse 4 just to, just to give context on who this is talking about. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 30 four. and 30 and what? Four. We're going to read verse 4, then I'm going to skip down uh, from 4, I'm going to skip down okay. to 12. Okay, so we can establish who this is talking about. And these are the words. 
The Yahweh spoke concerning Israel and concerning Yehuda. Okay, so bet. We already know at this time we're dealing with the northern and southern kingdom. These are the words he spoke to them. All right, let's jump down to verse 12. Verse 12 says, oh, and, and this also ties into 53, Isaiah 53, 5, um, as far as being wounded from their transgressions, um, being wounded from their rebellion. All right. For thus says Yahweh, thy hurt is incurable and thy wound is grievous. None deemeth of thy wound that it may be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicine. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a, uh, of a cruel one, for the greatness of thine iniquity, because thy sins ha- uh, were increased. Okay, cool. We already dealing with If we're going to deal with Isaiah 53, let's deal with everything. We can't just jump to the New Testament and try to wait, put wait, it wait, in wait. there. I find, I find that you just said that. Hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. It says, for whose sins was they wounded? Was it for the nation's sins or their own sins? Right here. It says, and thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee right. not. The nation's, the nation's I have, the okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, brother. Hold, hold fast. You got time. Hold on. Watch what it says. Because you try to hurry up and jump. Listen, God, watch what it says. <laughs> All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement mm-hmm. of a cruel one. For the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. So in other words, Isaiah 53 is talking about a person who was not guilty, who knew no sin, who had no violence, no Hamas, who had no deceit. But this right here, God is wounding these people for their own deceit and their the violence. Servant, the suffering servant suffered ah. also because, because of Israel as well as um, – as, as well as, uh, he suffered because of Israel – he suffered because of what? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I got cut off. He suffered. He suffered because of not only not only because of the nation. He suffered also because of Israel. Because Israel was running rampant as well. Um, it says it says that if you go in Isaiah 49, seven, or excuse me, mm-hmm. Isaiah chapter 49, mm-hmm. it tells you he's going to be a light. Not only he's going to bring salvation not only to Israel but also to the, uh, be a light to the nation. He suffered because of all because of everybody. It wasn't just because. Okay, just because of the nation. No, because of everybody. Well, well, so, hold on, brother. Uh, it says that he brought healing to the nations, right? In other words, that service should bring healing to the nations, right? Uh-huh. Okay, well, let's look at 13 of the scriptures you just read. There is none to plead the cause. If thou may be bound up, thou hast no healing medicine. So what healing is this righteous nation or Israel Bring it to the nation when even Isaiah was undone before the Lord. We're healing. You got to give us some healing, 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 healing to the nation to bring to bring our salvation to the nation. Isaiah forty nine. You matter of fact, was Isaiah forty nine? Go through any of the servant songs. There's four of them. But well, hold on, brother. Well, hold on. Well, hold on. Well, hold on. Well, hold on. salvation. It's salvation. Is hold on. Wait, wait. Hold on, Je- uh, Johannigan. Uh, uh, how would you say your name? Wait for a minute. Now, the word that because I know you 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 not a parse Hebrew. You parse it really good, right? Now, oh, yeah, do. do you agree <laughs> that there is some type of grief or sickness that takes place there and is not just dealing with salvation? Would you agree to that? What, do you mean, what, what verse are you talking about? In other words, when you start dealing with Isaiah, look at it. Oh, yeah. It, says, it doesn't say it. All right. All right. So we can go over to Yeshiahu. Let me get back there. Chapter 53, I believe it's verse, verse 3. Let me look. Uh, 53. Uh, uh, he was despised and forsaken of men. Um, a man. Oh yeah, the KJV says sickness. That's not what it says. That is not what it says in the Hebrew. It says that he was despised and forsaken of men. A man of pains and acquainted with diseases. So what diseases did JC have? All right. So so let me ask you this question. Now hold on. No, already. That's why. Listen, I took you back there on purpose <laughs> because you just said salvation. That's what you just said, right? So okay, that's mm-hmm. fine. Now. You said that the nation's, uh, the, uh, the medicine is salvation. So clearly here, right, clearly here, it is more than just uh, someone being saved. In other words, this servant is, is, is relating to some type of grief or pain that he's taking away or he's bearing or carrying this load. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what. Let me let me let me interject. If you go over to Deuteronomy, if you go over to what is it, Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight, you tell me that we aren't suffering and bearing their diseases and whatnot, diseases that we didn't even know. They were poured on us. That's part of the curses. That's what it says. That's what it says in Deuteronomy. If you go over in the Deuteronomy 28, hey, I can't oh, you, Wait, 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 wait. You ain't ca- – listen, listen, bro. When you bury – when you bury or carry somebody's sins, right, or they – I mean, or their, their sicknesses, right, 
Now, hold mm-hmm. on for a minute. First of all, as I stated before, you carry in that because in Deuteronomy, you sin. So, therefore, you didn't follow the commandments or the instructions, so you do just your penalty. Because you exactly. the time to the Everybody, even the remnant, even the remnant suffers from that. Why? Because it's judged right. as a whole. Thank you for proving but my hold point. Hold on. <laughs> right, right, right. But hold on. Get yeah, right. No, no. You, you, you definitely all. That bottom line is this: is as I stated before. What? But what? What did Israel do to bring some type of healing? Because this is just more. Than, this not. This is more than just salvation. This healing, as you just stated, is dealing with also pain, grief, sicknesses, and disease. What type of healing? Can I get that? Can I get that? Can I get that? Can I get that? What type? Hold on. Okay. Okay. Well, hold on. Let me finish. What type of healing did Israel, because of their suffering, did they suffer because their own sins brought to the nations? Because last I checked, when they sinned. God sent the, the nations against them, and then they overdid their do they, they overdid their punishment towards Israel, and they was judged just yes, as well. What type of healing and diseases was healed? Only healing I seen is when Christ what was healing healing by the power of God. If the remnant is a light to the entire nation, how do you figure they aren't? If they're a light to the entire nation, they go back into the land. That's how they're going to be a healing to the entire nation, to the entire world. What you're saying, honestly, in all honesty, it makes no sense. But I would love to ask you a, a quick question, and then I'll leave you all alone, because I've more than proven my point here. You, all right, in the book of Eusebius, now, um, you're a Christian, right? Yes. Okay. Did early Christians take on the uh, same thought process as you? Because the first Christians, the very first Christians, the Ebionites, they didn't agree with you. The Ebionites did not take on, did not take on the, the J.C. was this magical, mythical thing. They said that he was a human being. They said that he was a human being. That was what he, That was what they said he was. These are the very first Christians. Anybody, go look it up. That's a primary source. This was the first church historian. They called him the father of church history. That's what the Ebionites, Ebionites said. That's not me. Do you agree with the Ebionites, or, or are you going to say the very first Christians were wrong? Uh, uh, I really don't too much care. Well, hold on. Well, hold on. First of all, I can care less about what somebody felt at that time if they ain't got the revelation that they need. Listen, last I checked, if I'm moved by uh by how somebody felt or how they interpret something, I'd be deceived. And what I look at it, I, I, there's earlier Christians that interpreted a certain different way. There's many uh, earlier Christians. So the Ebonites, that's just one sect of people. You know, so that's, that's the bottom line. What about, one. okay, if you, if, you wanna, if you want to use them doing that was not, uh, listed uh, far as what Christ was talking about, different things that they practices, if you want to use them. So evidently, let's look at this. Let me ask you this, since you want to ask somebody something. Let's look. Yeah, I had to jump in, man. You know, <laughs> Unfortunately, you got to get one more caller for now. And we're going to come back to the audience out there. Again, you know, we've got, to, we've got to definitely pick up back with the dialogue. I say 53, but we've got to take one more caller for now. We're going to come back to you guys. Let's take another caller, though. Let's go to 413-782. You're live on the air. Yes. Uh, Shalom, Chris. Shalom, Ron. Sal, this is Pinky Salisbury. And, What's going on, uh, Pete? Peace, brother. How you doing? Good. So, I heard Leron made some disparaging remarks about the translators of the the Hebrew text. So I'm going to assume you can translate it. You say what? Let's go over the Hebrew text. Since it was so terribly done. Uh, who go, is let's, this? Let's go over it right now. Who is this? Me, so I was very... Uh, was it? You said pick me. Yeah, I heard you. Right. <laughs> go ahead, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Point to Hebrew, bro. Do your best. You got to do it. You said it was terrible. So we want to hear you do it. I just looked at the Tanakh and say certain things. Go ahead. You got it. Are you ready? Go ahead. You got it. No, I'm asking you. What's the first one? What's the first one of what? The first word. in there. Oh, you talking about uh, you? Uh, you you giving me commentary or what? No, no, that's the word hine. So, what, what is it in English? And can you uh, you tell me? You know, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't speak Hebrew. I 
speak Hebrew. I just read it from the stone to knock and going by what uh what other uh uh um uh, you ain't the only one to read uh the, the uh read Hebrew or whatever the case may be. They got scholars out there. Are you a scholar? You got a uh, do you have a, uh any degrees in it in it? Fast talk all you want, but we're gonna stick on this word. Let's go. Here I'm gonna ask, do you have do you have do you have any degrees? Because I'm I'm I got translations from a scholar that got that uh, speak this a linguist. Do you have any degrees? I do have a degree now. Can we get back to the word, please? Hey, Nick. Right. All right. Well, yeah, whatever. Go ahead. So you, you're saying it's a terrible translation, but you can't translate. That's what you're telling me. Okay, what verse are you at, first of all? We'll start at the beginning, 52.13. And what is, I mean, go ahead, read it. What does it say? What's your, what's your interpretation of it? You got some type of lie. I don't speak Hebrew. You don't speak Hebrew. You don't nope. read Hebrew, correct? So how, how can you I make a critique it. on it? Because I've read it from where it was being read at. That's why. You read it from where it's being read at. I, so read it. Yeah, read I, read, I, read, I, read, I read it. It's talking about Israel. Can you please read the Hebrew? What what what's the what's the delay? Uh, you go There's ahead. People you waiting. It. God, you, you know what you I, read. I just did read it. Let's listen. What's your, you listen, listen. Come in here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But listen, that's what I'm saying. Come in here. What's your argument? And I'm going to deal with it. What's your argument? The argument is you don't read Hebrew. How can you critique it? How can you even execute it? All right, that's why, because I know, I know, because I know the certain, I listen, I know, listen, I know the certain scriptures that are verses you're going to go to, and guess what? I'm going to deal with the words and the usage that you're going to deal with there. So which one you want to go to? Like my question, okay, so my, my, my question to you is this is, does this does this is it is hold on is the suffering ser- servant put to death? Does that servant die? So you're not going to deal with my question and ask me another question. Right. Let's That's get what to you're the meat. Do. Let's get you're to the meat. I don't speak Hebrew. I don't. Speak, I'm not going to play. I'm not. I listen. Meat is Hebrew. We're not playing games. I'm going to the Hebrew, the language right. that was written. Right. Well, right. Is that is that is that is that the best you could come with? Come, with, with, come here and prove that? something. But, Prove that Isaiah 53 is talking about Israel. Prove it. We did that with already. The Hebrew, did you say you with the no, Who did that already? It's who did that already? Time. John got slammed. He came who? in here. Slammed by who? What are you talking about? John, why, why are you John, not dealing John, with? John, listen. Are hold on, hold on. John, it, you, you, wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Listen, John. Right, hold, on, Hebrew, hold, on, right? hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let Chris get up in here, <laughs> and after that, we're going to continue this dialogue, man. Hey, Chris, you come up in there. Oh, no, man. I'm just waiting so we can get back on Isaiah 53. Uh, I appreciate all the callers calling in. I think G-Con got some enemies out there we, I don't even know about. <laughs> so uh, whenever you're, we're ready to get back into the conversation, like I said, I thank Star for calling in and Pinky for calling in, man. Thank you all for y'all time. Shalom. Yeah, all right, we're going to get back into it. And uh, like I said, we don't, we're going to go back to the audience, of course. But let's get back into the dialogue session. Uh, go ahead. All right, so um, where was we even at, man? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I forgot where we were at. All right, so um, I think, okay, I think we was in verse number 10 where I was showing that that was the father rejoicing over Israel, that he would destroy them, uh, as he said in um. Um, I, um, Deuteronomy, uh, the 28th chapter, verse 63. Now, we were talking about healing diseases, too. I heard them bring that up. So can we go to Psalms 103, 1 through 12, and let's read that. Okay, so um, I'm going to go there right quick, but I'm gonna, let me change my headphones um, because one of um, my wireless gear. Right, so let's go to Psalms 103, 1 through 12 so we can see who's going to do the healing here. All right. Um, okay, Psalms 103. 1 through 12, and it says, uh, um, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with love, kindness, and tender mercies. So great is his mercy towards those who fear him. And far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So we see right there, the Father's going to heal you. Um, I think in the book of Mark, it said you could drink snake, snake juice if you believe in Jesus. I don't see nobody doing that. 
Right. But uh, if you look at it, though, um, who uh, was Elijah? Was he working by the anointing anointing of, of the father? Of course he was. Right. So, 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 you know, bottom line is this. I, you know, when you say I'm going to send you a Hold space, on, hold on, G-Con. Calm you. down. It's just me, Chris, on the phone. Just calm down. Right, right. <laughs> you fired right, up. Right. Oh, no, you, we, we good. We, no, we good. We good. But what I'm saying is this is, this is, is um, when you say that, I'm going to send you a savior or when you see that this person is working in the stead of the father or of the, uh, what we call, what I will call the, uh, triune God or, you know, the, uh, complex God basically, uh, or the Godhead. He's working in that stead. You might say, well, okay, the father only, that's fine. Whatever the case may be, but you have to agree that there is someone that is working the power of the father, which is Elijah. So with that being said, you, we can make the same type of argument that you're making. You know, if you're saying that this, uh, you know, the the father is choosing to manifest himself through someone or somebody, and we believe it is mainly through the son. But like I say, with, 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 uh, with, with you know, these, these brothers, um, if you have an argument about something, and you want to bring your argument, or you want to parse the Hebrew, or you want to break it down, go ahead and do it. Let's go to it. Let's do it. You know. No, 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 no. no. We're not gonna go there. Let's let's stay on point. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, right, because right, we're right. talking about the spirit, right? We we we've gone into the spirit, right? right? So let's go to Deuteronomy right. chapter eighteen. Let's go to Deuteronomy eighteen. You know where I'm going. Let's go to Deuteronomy right. um chapter eighteen. All right, verses fit um verse eighteen. Deuteronomy eighteen and eighteen. And it says, I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. Right? So we see that the father, he's going to speak. Uh, um, um, that's, that's not just a part of it, but that's part of a uh, law about all prophets. Okay? So um, we see, I want to show you something. Whenever the father speaks to a prophet and he puts the spirit upon him um, as concerning this, when that spirit came against, uh, up um, on Joshua, nobody was able to stand in front of him, right? Nobody was able to touch Joshua. Am I right? Right. Okay. Um, also, the same thing happened with Saul, Israel's first king, right? I mean, um, Saul. Um, the, a spirit came over Saul. And um, Israel um, saw he was ready to bang on the Philistines, right? Right. Okay, David himself, he was ready to bang on all of Israel's enemies every time this spirit came upon him, right? He used to say, the Father's right hand is upon me. Let's get it. Let's bang, right? Now, when right. Jesus walked the earth, and I didn't want to go here, but this spirit is supposedly put on Jesus. But yet, Herod dressed him in a robe, Pontius Pilate, everybody beat him and killed him. Now, I didn't already showed you that the father would take joy in killing Israel, okay, punishing Israel for their iniquity. Where was the spirit at with this Messiah? You see what I'm saying? Where was it at? Because everybody stood in front of him and, 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 and spit on him and beat him, put a crown of thorns on his head. Everybody did this to him. Where was the spirit right, at? Right, right. Right, right, and I'm glad you made that case because if you're going to make that case, you're going to say that the spirit is put on these guys like that, and they got busy so and they slew. We can talk about right. it. That's part of this. Right, Isaiah right, 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 right. I understand, but okay. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, you, 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 you got to come a little bit more better than that because what happens is now you're stating that, you know, in Isaiah 53 it says that this person wasn't going to. Uh, let's go to a matter of fact. Let's go to because I don't want to misquote it. Uh, it okay. says that. Um, Look at it. It says uh, he opened not his mouth. Um, it says, um, you know, uh, but he was wounded for our transgressions. And it says that he opened not his mouth. Let me look at it. It says he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to slaughter. So as a sheer, as a sheep before shearers is dumb. I mean, as, a, as, as I mean to the slaughter as a sheep before her shearers. Is dumb. So in other words, this 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 servant is not doing any of these things that you're talking about. So what Christ did, you know, is something that he was told that he wasn't he, he wasn't supposed to be doing. Like this, this suffering servant, 
wasn't supposed to open up their mouth. Wasn't supposed, was supposed to go like a sheep to the to, to the slaughter, like a sheep. I'm, I'm pretty sure you know historically on how that happens, how a sheep goes, you know, uh, and how that sheep is put to death basically and slaughtered. So I well, think can, this, can I, can this I answer that? Go ahead. Okay, now um, I, I, I just see if it says Jeremiah twelve and three. But thou, O Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried my heart toward thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. Okay, Jeremiah 11 and 19. I had been like a lamb led to the slaughter. I did not realize that they had plotted against me, saying, let us destroy the tree and its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living that his name may be remembered no more. Right, right. And who was that? Was that Jeremiah? Was that Jeremiah that was saying that they did try to cut you? Right. They try okay, to cut no. Jeremiah off. See, 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 see. In other words, Jeremiah is, is if you look at it, he's making the case when you read the totality of that. The Israel is trying to cut him off from the land of the living. So Jeremiah is looked at as a sheep, as being uh, going to the. Uh, uh, it's Israel. Israel is the one that's killing their own prophets. Is we know that. Not yeah. the nation. Yeah. It's Israel doing that. And yeah. so what I'm saying is this is what I'm saying is this is even though it is Jeremiah. Jeremiah himself is not this suffering servant due to the fact of he is not. See, the, the whole theme of his innocent blood being shed. Now, Jeremiah, right, right, Isaiah. Right. you right. But what I, I'm, so I'm wait, trying wait, to wait, show you well, is well, 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 wait, wait, hold on. Let me say this real quick. He said that there is none righteous. I know not one. All have gone astray. And if Isaiah went before the Most High and he himself, was unclean or undone, who's to say that Jeremiah wasn't? So what we're seeing is this is, Jer- uh, Jeremiah had to offer for him his own sin. So who is this person that takes on this guilt or, or that takes on this uh, uh, however you say, Hashem or Hashem or however you said, that takes on this, this guilt offering or a soul offering for the people for their sins and carry those sins? As we see in Leviticus chapter five, and also in Leviticus sixteen, as the uh, as a uh, uh, the scapegoat, and also um, the uh, the uh, the the two goats that bear the sins of the people, and one of them. Is but we also, also see that also. in Ezekiel, with Ezekiel bearing the sins of the people too. G con, we just trying to right. we just trying to run to Christ and jump over everybody else because when you they say he shall not open his mouth, right? Matthew 27 and 11 said, now Jesus stood before Pilate, the governor, and the governor asked him, are you king of the uh, Jews? Jesus said to him, it is as you say. So he's already opened his mouth. So that, that right, excludes right. him from that. Right, right, right. Well, hold he on. Well, hold, what I'm trying to get go you, ahead, go ahead. What I'm trying to get you to see about Ezekiel, as I stated before, Ezekiel mm-hmm. is, 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 is a prophet, and he did the same thing that Christ did. He was killed. By Israel, he was killed by them. He, in other words, he was burnt. They was trying to kill him because what he was teaching, what he was bringing. But see, so all I'm saying with Ezekiel, though. Okay, let me. Let, we're gonna stay on topic. Me and you both gonna stay on topic. Now we see Ezekiel doing what the Father told him to do. Christ came with a new doctrine. He was doing water baptism. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. In the make- drinking my blood. That's not in the Torah, and no prophet never taught that. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on, stop for a minute. Now, first of all, when Christ says, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, Israel right. should have understood this because, you know, I studied the tabernacle. Israel, mm-hmm. partake, of the, uh, Israel partake of the Passover in the offering. Of a lamb, so, of a real lamb. Right, 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 right. right. So uh, do you think the, the father just got these people having a cookout in the wilderness and this thing, these things don't mean anything? Why are they doing well, these are types and shadows? So okay, when Christ is speaking on. like he's speaking, okay. So when Christ is speaking like he's speaking, he's speaking of innocent blood that is being shed, and also partaking of some uh, partake. I mean, uh, and also showing you of how Israel would have known of the, uh, the his doctrine. Okay, and that's now I gotta stop about. you right there. I like the way you spiritualize that. But the father gave, he said, I never intended this for you, but because of sin. Go, if you turn to um, Leviticus, I think it's 17, verse 13. Let, let's go there. He never intended for them to sacrifice. 
He did not want that for them. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Okay. Um, right. I think but, uh, the, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we can find I'll find that in a minute. But, uh, oh, um, it was added for um, animal sacrifice was added for transgressions is what I was trying to say. Because, as you said, blood got to be spilt. We agree with that. Look. G-Con, I'm not running from that. You don't have to spiritualize that. But we, what I'm trying to tell you is if you're going to bring an offering, it's got to come across the altar, not at Golgotha, where he was hung at and beat and cut. The lamb must be unblemished. He was blemished. Okay, so let's not talk with the oh, spiritually um, the spiritual thing and the allegorical thing with the um, meat and drink offerings because – the first thing I said was, if you read the um, the law says you can't drink blood or you'll be cut off from your people. Now, if right, he right, say if right, you look right. at a woman, but wait, wait. If he say if you look right. at a woman with um and lust after her, that's adultery. So looking at her is symbolically of naturally committing the act itself. So why would he tell you to symbolically um drink blood? The people only now, uh, need the uh, father giving that to them, wait, wait. manna from um manna from heaven. Right, right, right. And he said that he came down and he was like he was the bread or that spiritual food. So he, he's telling you right there that it's symbolic. So what he's saying is this, is you're partaking of a Passover, right? You think right. that you're partaking. You, you can't, listen, you can't pass. <laughs> uh, you, can't pa- you can't get past the destroyer but by blood, right? Mm-hmm. So, so bottom line is you even have to, to even initiate the covenant, you got to circumcise the foreskin. Right. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so what I'm saying is this is when Christ is telling you that this is something that is figurative, he's not telling you go and drink some blood or do any of those things. This is figurative, and he's telling you that this is figurative. He said, I am that bread that came down from heaven. So what I'm saying is this is you made the analogy. You said that he said that obedience is better than sacrifice. You're right. Had Adam been obedient, that would never been a necessity to sacrifice. And not only that, mm-hmm. it says that in Exodus, he says, let my people go, that they may go into the wilderness to sacrifice. Now, he is speaking to Israel as a whole unto them about sacrifices until he brought them to the mountain and to make the tabernacle, which was initiated by blood, and blood was sprinkled on the priests in the book and all the people. And the people agreed to the covenant. So the token or the sign of the covenant is blood, bottom line. Whether you deal with the foreskin or whether you're dealing with the book and the tabernacle. Everything is dealing with the blood. You can't get past it. Even when we go back to Adam, we can move Israel off to the side. So what I'm saying okay. is this. You're not getting past the blood at all. And so when we look at it, it must be innocent blood shed that is shed as the ultimate person. We've got many messiahs, but there must be somebody who is innocent. Now, Christ. No, 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 no. You got ahead of yourself right there. Okay? Because when we read Isaiah 53, when we read Isaiah 53 and 10, the word there is a sham, which is a guilt offering. A guilt offering is not a sin offering. That's what would hey, let me tell right, you. Hey, hold on. Right, right, well, well, hold on. Let's, let, I'm glad you brought that out. Now, rather what offering that you say it is, is a guilt offering for somebody that is guilty of a sin or a trespass. Can, can, we, can we go there? Can we go there in the book? Right. Go there can in the book. Can we go there? Okay. Okay. I'm at Isaiah 53 and 10 right now. You can keep, you can keep talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. Keep talking. Right. It's good. We, we, we all jump. See, see, what I mean is this is, either way, that person is guilty of a trespass. Now, this person that we see this in, and I'm glad you brought that out, and Isaiah 53, the suffering servant, he's not guilty of, of none of these things. He's taking on those things that the people are guilty of, and he's taking those things and bearing those things as that guilt offering, which is still innocent blood being shed for the people. In other words, that animal did sin. Israel sinned. Okay, but like you said, in order for it to be any type of offering, it's got to go through the altar, and it's got to be an animal. It cannot be a human. 
You mean to tell me all the people out there are sacrificing animals and y'all want to sit up there and say, oh, they were preparing for a human to be sacrificed when the father abhors that? Well, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's figurative and symbolic. Now, I find it odd that you can use Israel as the suffering servant that is put to death. Jesus, there is a problem. A <laughs> no, problem. don't try that. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> <be a problem. laughs> Listen. First of all, Israel being put to death for their own iniquity is one thing, but a man dying for another man's sins and being sacrificed for another man's sins is two totally different concepts. It's two well, hold totally on for a different minute. concepts. Well, well hold, right, right. Now, now, hold on for a minute. Now, now, when we look at a man, overall, the universal principle, right? When we look at the universal principle, now, as I stated before, me and you die because of what? Why do we sin. die? Sin. Sin. Right, right. So hold on. Adam's first transgression. So, so listen. If you listen, if you had not sinned, would you still die? Answer that. If I had no sin. Uh, no, we would not because um, in the garden we would no, 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 all right, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Let me okay, rephrase the question. Now, all right. You you would agree that you come from Adam, right? We all do, correct. So death came into into the world by way of Adam, right? By way of sin. Right, right. So by who sin? Adam. Adam sin. Right. So the, by correct. way of Adam sin. So so because of Adam correct. sin, guess what? All men go back to what? They go to the dust of the earth, right? Correct. So, listen, that has been placed upon you because of what Adam did. Would you agree to that? Okay. I so, did. if you didn't. Yeah, I agree with so, that. So, so, right. So, if you did not sin, right, you still uh-huh. gonna die. Uh, babies don't sin, but they still die, right? They still can die, right? Death still can get them, right? Right, baby, that's right. Sin came into the world through transgression, correct? That is what we call, when we start dealing with scientifically, the law of ent- entropy. When we start dealing with things coming to uh, uh, decay, uh, uh, generation. We're not going to get into that because, man, you, we, can, we can say that for another show because I know you go right. deep into that. I have listened to your shows before because then I can say something like, well, what prophet taught, t- teach that? And I, I'm not trying to get you cut because we building right now. I just want right. to keep it on Isaiah 53. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I've already showed you. One thing you got to show me now is, does the Father accept the blemish? Does he accept the blemish of um, sacrifice? Jesus said, let your yes be yes or your no be no. Anything of that is of the evil one. Does he accept the blemish sacrifice? Uh, yes, he definitely does. Yes. Okay, can you, can you, give, me, can you give me an example, please? Uh, the Isaiah, the suffering servant, he bore the iniquities of the people, and therefore he died. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A blemish sacrifice, though. A blemish sacrifice. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, 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 yeah, depending on what you mean by blemish. No, he does not accept okay. anything that's, that's uh, uh, okay. yeah. Okay, was Jesus beaten and scarred? Uh, well, 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 first of all, it's figurative. In other words, when you say a blemish, right? You're basically saying something in 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 a in a in a, in a, in a uh, to gener- generalize it. In other words, Christ knew no sin; he was not a sinner. So the animal would be looked at as uh, looked at as in the manner as a blemish because it was innocent. Uh, um, it was innocent. No, I mean it could be. Uh, uh-uh. I mean, not, not, I'm sorry. It couldn't. I'm sorry. It couldn't. It couldn't be. Uh, it couldn't be no type of animal that was uh, infected or sick. Or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? It couldn't do none of that because it had to bear the sin and it couldn't be scarred or beaten or any of that. Now, this is pretty well, Let's read Malachi 1 through 4, 1, um, chapter 1, verse 14. Let's just get some understanding on it. All right? Go ahead. Okay, because this is the law. As in Luke said, he came by all the holy prophets that spoke his name, right? Okay, because let's go to Malachi. Let me go to the book of Malachi. All right? It's the last book before the um, New Testament. Let's go to chapter 1, verse 14, and let's see about a blemished sacrifice, all right? And it says, but cursed be the deceiver who has in his flock a male and takes a vow, but sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished, 
for I'm a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among the nations. So we know right there we can't be, um, he don't accept no blemish sacrifice. If you weren't allowed well, uh, to sacrifice your children a Molech, he ain't going to sacrifice his um, son. The Most High don't break his own law. And I know many well, people want to sit up here and use the word divine judgment. Well, hold on, hold on for a minute. Would you, go ahead, hold on, go hold on. Would you agree, hold on, would you agree that when he said that he doesn't accept a blemish sacrifice, the sacrifice in itself is something that is uh, foreshadowed or, 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 or uh, figurative? Okay. Can, all right, listen. If we go, I'm going to answer question. this question for you because it's fair. It's, it's a fair question on your stance, okay? I need to see um, foreshadowing um, uh, scriptures in the Bible. Because the Most High did not tell his people to do all these things just so uh, and sacrifice goats and lambs just so he could say, see, I got y'all ready for this so y'all can watch my son die on the cross and be punished all day. Show well, hold on. Let, well, let me, ask you, well, let me ask you this question. Do Go you ahead. actually think, do you actually think the Lord just got these people cutting on these things and cutting their throats and, 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 and it doesn't mean anything because he, 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 I mean, he just basically just said it a life for a life. Did he, did he not say that? Okay. Yes, he did. But we got to understand something, especially when they were in the wilderness, correct? Now, we got to understand yes. that the Israelites were that of an agricultural people. Okay, so their lambs and their goats and their bulls and their rams, these were all ways of how they made their money. So it was almost like me living in Detroit going down to the 36th District Court to pay a car ticket. If I'm there, guess what? Man, it's embarrassing because you know you're about to kick up about $200. It's the same thing with a lamb when you're taking it to the altar. Like, ah, ha, look at him. He done sinned. You see what I'm saying? Why, That's why, what that why, was why about. Is he, why, is he, why is he using in Isaiah 53 sheep as an example of, if you want to say Israel, or if I'm saying the Messiah, why is he using that as an example? Because it's figurative, in what right? Verse? Uh, in what verse? Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 oh, and, uh, Hold on, my headphones uh, fell out. In Isaiah 53, verse, you said sheep, though. You say Isaiah 53, verse what? Um, Isaiah 53 and, uh, and uh, 6. Isaiah 53 and 6. Let's go there together. Hold on, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, it's, not that, it's not that scripture. It's, uh, it's, uh, is this the one? Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, verse, verse 7. All like sheep have gone astray, right? Verse 7. Verse 7 says, oh, verse he was seven. oppressed and he was afflicted. And he opened okay, not good, his good. mouth. Stop there. Stop he is there. brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Okay, good. And as a sheep um, for the shears and stuff. Okay, good. Okay, let's see. Let's go to Isaiah 48 and 9. 48 verse 9. Read that. Hold on for a minute. Yeah. But I just want you to answer that question too, though. Isaiah 48 verse 9. <laughs> Hold on. You want me to answer the question? It's 48 verse Isaiah 48 9. and 9. Don't says, answer it for you. It says, For my name's sake will I defer my anger, and for my praise will I refrain from thee. And I cut thee not off. It says, Behold, I will refine thee, but not with silver. I have chosen I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Okay, so right there, we got where it say right here. He said he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Okay, so the most high put a judgment on him through um to redeem him through his judgments. We could find Wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Uh, this couldn't be talking about the same servant ser- ser- because because Israel constantly, consistently opened their mouth and complained about what God was doing. And matter of fact, they was in the position they was in because of their own sin. No way, wait, wait, wait. I've already God. told you Jesus opening up his mouth, though. He opened well, up his on, mouth I just, many I just, hold times. Hold on, hold on. I just want to bring this point out. How is it that we see, as I stated before, an example of Israel, uh, if you want to say Israel there, which you just said it was Israel, uh-huh. As, as 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 example of them being like sheep, led to the okay, slaughter. Okay, let's go to Psalm forty-four. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why is you okay. see that? Why do you see? Why do you see that there as an example of them being led to the slaughter? But you can't look back and see Israel. Uh, um, Israel basically. Uh, I mean, not Israel in in the in the, in the tabernacle. You can't look back and see that those animals that was being led to the slaughter that was innocent, bearing the iniquities and the sins of the people as something that was being foreshadowed. 
In other words, it's, okay, it's so you're saying, right there. I get what you're saying. I understand what you're saying now. You're saying that the, the uh, animals going to the altar was somewhat a foreshadowing of innocent animals going to the altar to be sacrificed is a foreshadowing of Christ going to, the, um, going to his crucifixion, right? Definitely. Okay. I'm going to because if you look, if you look this. at the text, hold on. If you look at the text real quick, if you look at the text, right, the text is clear that after Christ did what he did, Christ went into the holies of holies to go before the face of God. Now, whoever, when we look in, in the tabernacle, the innocent blood. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Christ shed. went to the holies of holies. Yeah, Christ went and was seated. Was seated right there in the face of God. Let's go there. Let's go where? To where Christ was seated in the Holy of Holies with God. Let's go there. Let's go to that script. That's, uh, uh, it's in Hebrews. In Hebrews. In the, in the in book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Yeah, it, but, that, but that's what I'm telling you. If you're going to go, if, if we're going to know anything about Christ, we're going to know that we, we're going we're gonna to use the narrative of the New Testament because that's when we see that he goes as a priest and accomplished as being his blood being shed as a priest and also uh, um, going before the father. And he's acceptable, so he's after the order of Melchizedek. Well, well, okay. Wait, okay. Now, I don't really want to go too much in the order of Melchizedek, but I'm going to attack it right now because I'm going to give away too much. Okay. In order to be a, um, in the Melchizedek order, you got to be both, what, a priest and a king. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, now in order to be a priest and a king, you must be what? Anointed by a high priest, a high priest with the oil from the temple, right? Yes. Okay, now we know David was a king under the order of Melchizedek, right? Okay, uh, now uh, I'm going to ask. Well, well, you know what? You know what? You know what? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I've, I've heard that argument, but it's. A little bit more than that, but uh, you can, I, for, for time's sake, go ahead. You, I'll give you that. Go well, ahead. in order to do that, to be both a priest and a king, you have to also prepare an altar for a sacrifice. So we know David did all three, not to mention he prophesied to the Most High. But I want to stay on point first, and I want to answer your question. Um, go to Psalms 44, verse 22. Boy, my mouth's going dry, man. <laughs> preach all these <laughs> precepts, man. Damn. Excuse me. Excuse me, audience. Just to let y'all know, we only have like, uh, a few minutes left in the air. Just letting y'all know. Look at it. Okay, listen. Psalm um, we going Okay. Um, Psalm 44, verse 22. Read that. This about the sheep. It says, um, Yea, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Okay. Yep. So there it is right there. Precept upon so precept, so, line upon line, so we can gain some understanding. Them sheep, those sheep um, being killed and spilled, all their blood, their innocent blood, man, that's letting also Israel know, man, when y'all keep committing all these sins, it's going to be your blood being spilled. Them right, sheep, well, hold on he for always a called Israel his sheep. Wait, hold on. This, this, first of all, this couldn't be talking about that's why I was trying to lead you to go to the uh, remnant of Israel. This couldn't be talking about all okay, Israel. Okay, go to Ezra 9 and 16. I'm trying hold to on, hold, wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. It says, <laughs> it says, <laughs> that's what it says. It says, um, oh, what, what, what verse right? It says, uh, verse 22. Yea, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Now, is this talking about the prophets or is this talking about Israel? Who is this talking about? That's talking about, okay. That's on my Israel, g I'm not giving you that one now. Come no, on, you're well, reaching well, on no, that now. Okay, 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 we know. Okay, hold on. Now, we know that the prophets are Israel, but who is it talking specifically about a righteous remnant of Israel? Because Let's go we there. Know that, I want to answer you. I want to answer wait, oh, you. Wait, 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 right, right, right. Because if you look at it, it says, yet for thy sake are we killed. Well, hold on. Uh, is, the, is Israel killed for, for the father's sake or for their own doings? So this will have to be categorized as a righteous remnant that are being killed for the sake of the father. And, and, and the Israelites are actually the ones that's killing them because they're killing their own okay. problem. We go, I'm going to answer this. I'm going to give you Ezra okay. 9, verse 15. Okay? 
I'm surprised about this one. I found this one came out. Okay. Lord, the God of Israel, you are righteous. We are left this day as a remnant. Here we are before you in our guilt, though because of it, not one of us can stand in your presence. I'm going to go, then I'm going to precept it. Oh, Let's go to you Isaiah. just cut yourself. You no, just cut no, no, yourself. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Read that again. Read it. You just cut, you just gave me a dagger. You just cut yourself. Read it again. <laughs> it says, it says, Lord, the God of Israel, you are righteous. We are left this day as a remnant, right? Here we are before you in guilt, though because of it, not one of us can stand in your presence. Right, so okay, let me let, wait, let me hold on, hold on, hold on, quick, wait, 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 Clear, clearly, hold on, clearly, let's stay right here and we go precept it. <laughs> clearly, Israel and these righteous, uh, you say a righteous remnant, clearly they have some type of guilt. They have, they, they are not, they cannot be uh, uh, without blemish, and they, they, they cannot be innocent bloodshed because guess what? They themselves just said that they are guilty, so they can't right, be a shell at all. Okay, Okay. now let's continue, all right, so we can get some understanding, all right? It says, Isaiah 10, verse 22, though your people be like the sand by the sea, Israel, only a remnant will return. Destruction has been, de- been, been excuse me, been decreed, overwhelming, and righteous. Come on, g Khan, walk with me. Right, wait, 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 hold on. Right, right. So, so, so what you need to understand is these guys are saying to themselves right there that these guys are, can't even stand before God as, as well as Isaiah said. Now, we, knew, we do know that there is a righteous remnant. Definitely. We know that. But at the same time, they are not without guilt or shame. In other words, they are guilty themselves. Not because it, not because they so righteous because they 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 uh uh their own doings are but they themselves are guilty they cannot be what we see in the tabernacle being offered before God without blemish because they themselves are guilty so that's what I'm saying now when you look at it uh there is a perfect one there is one who knew no sin as Isaiah said oh, okay and, I'm a, I know where you going with that. And I'm going to answer you before you go there because y'all, you're trying to say it's Christ or Yeshua. I'm going to just say Yeshua, which was a very common name, by the way. But I'm going to go to, before you go there, there is a perfect one, right? I'm going to read you the law. The Father said, no one can come against Moses. And my law is perfect and holy and good. Even Paul said that. Let's go to Numbers 15. I'm sorry, Numbers chapter 1, verse 51. And it says, Whenever the tabernacle is to move, the Levites are to take it down, and whenever the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall do it. Anyone else who approaches it is to be put to death. He cannot go next to the holies of holies. He not a Levite. Um, um, I think you need to stop that because, number one, Moses did not sancti- fail to sanctify the Lord and uh, he was put to death, actually. And uh, the Lord sent him right up that hill. He didn't make it to the promised land. Now, no, he did not. But what that with, got to do with Numbers 1 and 51, brother? Uh, hold on. Now, when we deal with Christ, right, now, <laughs> it's clear you just stated the order of Melchizedek. Right. Now, that was sworn with a oath. And the order right. of Melchizedek is before the Levitical priesthood, which Abraham, who... Uh, Israel sprung from him, he even paid tithes to Melchizedek. So there was an order that was even before the Levitical priesthood. And so whoever this Melchizedek was, it's clear that, as you stated before, you said David. David is Judah. So if David is Judah, he's not a, Le- he's not a Levite. So how was he able to burn the linen and the ephod? <laughs> All right, family. Unfortunately, we definitely uh, winding this, the show down to a few minutes left, and I got to definitely take some callers. But what I'm going to do, of course, I'm going to give special guests some last words in order to, you know, we can do this, like, for hours, you know what I mean? Definitely a great conversation. You know, hopefully you guys take down your notes. Isaiah 53, 
you know, but we got to go to the audience to get some of their questions. And then after that, we're going to pretty much get some final words from both uh, special guests. Of course, I appreciate both brothers for coming on the platform and, you know, edifying the masses and bringing forth the information. Let's go to another caller. Let's see. Let's go to <clears throat> Let's go to seven one six five four one. You're live there. Hi. Um. Thanks for taking my call. Good evening. This is Sister Doris. I would like to ask the um Torah brother, um, who is Genesis three and fifteen speaking of? Hello. Can you repeat your question? Can you? Can you Genesis 3 and 15? Who is, who, is Genesis, who is Genesis 3 and 15 speaking of? Well, uh, we know that prophecy was fulfilled when um, the people were told to look at the snakes, um, look at the snakes so they could stop being bitten in their heels uh, while they were in, their hill, uh, in the um, wilderness. So that's not talking about Jesus. Uh, everybody tries to run there and say that's a messianic prophecy, but it's not. Do you have a precept for that? Um, yeah, let me, um, let me go ahead. Hey, G-Con, you can, an- oh, never mind. Yeah, let me, let me run there right quick. Let me, um, grab this Bible here. No, no, no. Wow, that's you cool. Say, yeah, G-Con, if you want to, you can, you can just say it. Yeah, I, I definitely, uh, I definitely, uh, don't see that, um, fully, uh, uh, being explained, expounded on. For 315, I believe, is Christ. And the reason why I say that is because, uh, he's given them a, um, He's giving them some type of redemptive, redemptive plan there that's going to take place or something that's going to come from them that's going to cause some type of deliverance from the overall sin that they're in. Now, when you look at, uh, he talked about what happened in Exodus or the serpent being raised up. That's, that is the works of the devil or, so to speak, I'm going to say Satan or the accuser or the serpent being uh, nailed to what we will say the, 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 uh, the stake or his works being nailed too, and whoever should look at that redemptive work should be healed. That's what that's talking about. Mm, you're right. They find in the precepts for uh, that that being already fulfilled. Okay. Um, well, when we look at it in Reve- okay, all right, and um, in the book of Revelations and um, the book of uh, Daniel. <laughs> Hey, oh, that, hey, oh, that's that's New Testament. You can't use I, that. I, no, wait a minute, sister. You called and asked me a question. So if you're gonna ask okay, me a question, you gotta let me I, answer I, it. Okay, forgive me. I forgive read both me. these are books. You, and I, are you Torah? Thank you. Are you sister, Torah? Let me answer the question. Okay, Sal, I'm gonna pass on the question. Okay, that's right. Because if you're gonna answer it in Revelation, you then already Daniel twelve said Michael it. gonna stand up and fight for the people, and your funny right. pages also say that Michael, not Jesus, gonna stand up and fight for the people. I ain't. I so how can that be a messianic prophecy about Jesus? He not even gonna fight the snake himself. I'm oh, waiting for the preacher. Yeah. I just yeah. gave it to you. I just gave it to you. Daniel chapter twelve, one through five, and Revelations chapter twelve. It said Michael show fight. And, and, you know what? And, and I'm glad you said that because in Daniel chapter 3, when it talks about the, those, those weeks, he hit it right on the money. Uh, the day that Christ was going to come in town, the day he was going to be crucified, everything, that hits it on the nail on the head right there. Um, uh, hey, Sal, um, I'd appreciate next time when a woman calls up here and we talk about Torah that she bring her husband in so I don't be at contention with a woman. And then her husband get mad at me okay, well, because she Sal, getting cut on the scriptures. Him, Sal, Thank can you, you ask him the question that I asked him? <laughs> I just gave you the answer. Yeah. Daniel chapter what? 12, Revelation verses 12. It said, Michael going to fight the devil. Mm. Okay. And, uh, well, back right, back at, right. Uh, the Lord shall fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Chris. Um, yeah, Chris um, ahead, you can pick and choose if you want to respond to anybody that calls in. So uh-uh, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. Um, to female for it. speaking, then yeah, I'm just saying, you know, that's up to you. If you feel a way about that, you can say I pass. That's okay. No, what, what I'm but, uh, saying is, if, I, if she's going to keep cutting me off when I'm trying to elaborate it to her, mm-hmm. then it's bringing contention. You know what I'm saying to a, a peaceful debate. Right. 
All right, G-Con, you can respond. All right, can you guys hear me? Can y'all hear yeah. me? Yep. I, can, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah um, I think that, uh, um, you know, it was a great question that was raised, uh, you know, the sister, you know, got it on the point about Daniel. Um, and that's that's it with that. I, I guess we can go to the next caller, but I definitely appreciate the sister for calling in and bringing a clarification and uh, asking a great question. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, let's take another person. Let's see, 772-672. You on there? Hey, what's going on, uh, Brother Sal? Uh, shalom to Shabbat Shalom to the brothers. Um, just want to say uh, um, peace, peace. a couple things. A couple things. Um, 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 about the what the what the sister just said about uh, Genesis three fifteen. I believe the scripture you're trying to look for is Numbers 21.9 that gives the account of them being bit in the wilderness, but it doesn't say they were bit in the hills. You know, it doesn't say they were bit in the hills. It said that they were bit. Funny thing about that is that uh, Moses made a, you know, a brass serpent in the pole, raised it up, and all those who believed were healed of the poison that infected their body, which is funny because Christ says in John 3.14 and 15, he says that that is regarding himself. So, Again, you know, you can choose to say, well, you know, like you just said, you know, that's your funny pages because it's funny because it's stupid, right? Um, and that's fine. That's fine. You, you're entitled to your opinion. Did to I say, say that. all those words? Yeah. Did I say you, all, you I did said those say, are the funny pages you, because yeah, we know funny pages. in I don't Daniel funny. chapter 12, if we know in Daniel chapter 12, it said Michael shall fight for the people. We know in Revelation yep. verse 12, it said, um, what's it called shall fight for the people? All right, who you still fight for, have who not, fight it for, said that Michael shall fight for the people. You know, it said Michael shall fight. That. I want to say something about that. In Revelation, of course, go ahead. My, Michael, Michael fights, the, 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 um, in Revelation it says Michael fights Satan. There's no contradiction. Okay, then. It says so Michael okay. fights, what are you talking about? No, Mike, Michael and his angels, Michael and his angels yeah. in Zechariah yeah, exactly. 14. Zechariah 14 says that the Lord should come and fight like he fought in the day in Zechariah 14. So the Lord going to fight too. But it ain't Jesus, is it? So how can 315 yes, be talking about Jesus? When, when, have you ever seen the father, when have you ever seen when have you ever seen the father come and fight? Uh exactly. you seen the representation of him come and fight. Psalms thirty four I exactly the angels do it, not Jesus. Jesus it is says the so, angels so, gonna do it. Let's, get, let's go to Psalms thirty four and seven. But hold up, before you do that, so before you do that, Chris, before you do that, before you do that though. Yeah. So uh, again, that was the answer to your question. Take it uh, whether you like it or not. You know, it is what it is. You know, you couldn't really precept that, and then run into Daniel twelve two Revelation. It didn't sufficiently answer that her, her um the previous caller's question um question. But what I wanted to say is because you said a couple of things. No, I you're saying that. that. No, you, you you're didn't address saying that. that. She, she said she said you're you got a stating that, you, Daniel. You, you went to Daniel. You went to Daniel's and you went to Revelation. That wasn't really what she said. She said, can you give a precept to show about how Genesis three um is fulfilled um in uh, in number twenty one? Can you give a precept and you you went this to, to something completely different? That's just the reality of what you did, but that's fine. But if what I'm sitting up there saying is, y'all saying he this new concept Messiah who ain't saved nobody, ain't fighting nobody, was ducking and running, banging on the Pharisees every chance he got. So but you ain't fooled him one question. time in Isaiah okay, so 53. Okay, so you're not going to answer the question. Okay, so you're not gonna answer question? question. So, so, again, like, like I said, you know, you... You, you you know you not allow me that time to to bring to address certain things you said. Number one, you said that um, you said you mentioned um, how come the spirit that was on David and all these other people, how come they wasn't touched yet? That when the spirit on Christ, he's touched. That's what you said, right? That's what I said. Okay, so um, in John, I want to bring it up for you. In in John chapter eight, verse twenty. It says, these words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hand, hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. It also said the same thing um, in, well, let me get that, that prescription. It also said the same thing uh, uh, another time in John as well. Um, it says that in John chapter 7, verse 30, then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. So, and then also it says that Jesus even says himself that if he wanted to, he stops Peter because Peter's trying to save him. He's like, man, what you doing? If I wanted to, I could call a, 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 I could call a legion of angels to rescue me. And so we see precepts okay, so can where I ask nobody's question? laying. Can I ask you a but, question? Go, go, go ahead. Because you keep on banging on me about this precept. Can you turn to Luke chapter 170 through 74? 
Luke because 1? we're talking about Isaiah 53. You're going no, somewhere I'm totally just different you way. Because you said that. I'm I just addressing what you. you said. Can you go to Luke you said, chapter 1, 70 through 70? Since we on it, explain. Look, let's just get to business. What did Jesus do? Did he redeem Israel? No. Did he save anybody? No. Did he save he his did. disciples? No. No, he didn't. He, did he even he chose did, a person he, he that did. was killing them. He saved them. He saved first them, all, really. First of all, first of all, again, we talked about this many times. It's just the salvation that, that Jesus came to save us from. You reject that salvation, which is no, the I don't reject death. that salvation because I've death. already been a promise of salvation through keeping the law and the testimony. Then why that you still written die, in the Chris? book, Chris? Why are you still died in Chris? Why are you going to die? Wait a minute. For, then why did Jesus die? Didn't he die that he may mean? die he, for our sins? That's what you believe. But but that's, that's why. Your belief. But you, but you it's know not, why though, It's Chris. not prophesied nowhere. Y'all only put him, as, which is so funny. You guys place him somewhere that's ambiguous. But you don't place but, him in any of the messianic like, prophecies where he's supposed no, but to be like, I, I like how you jump around. I like how you jump written. around, Chris. I, I like how you jump around. No, how you don't say. No, you, I like how you. Come, I'm gonna tell you how you jump around. Give, give me a second. No, I'm, you know what? I, I, I was waiting quiet. for you to call up here because you do this all the time. No, this is why I didn't want to debate you. Let me. Can you give me your question? Let me get a moment. Let me get a moment to talk, and I'll be quiet. Let me. Let me get a moment to talk, and I'll like to talk. Do the audience a favor. Because you keep talking, Chris. That's what you do. You keep running. You, you, you know why you keep running? Let him watch, you know what, you know why you keep running? Let him watch, you know Chris. Let him let him watch, Chris. Let him watch, Chris. You got the whole show, Chris. Chris. Let him watch, Chris. Chris, can you hear me, Chris? Let him get the question yeah. off. You know, you know, we got the whole show. You got the whole show. All right. Let him get the question off. Thank you. So, so I'm calling addressing certain things that Chris said that that you put out. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm correcting you on it and saying, well, look, you're saying this and this and that, but look what Jesus said here and there. And instead of addressing that, like, you know what? You know what? He, they, they didn't lay hands on him for real. So I see that the spirit was on him stopping him from keeping it. You completely ignore that, and you jump around to a completely different topic. No, I topic. did not can, can, can you didn't address ignore it. that. I okay, tried so to answer then. that. Okay, I'm going to address it. Luke, Luke chapter 1, verses 70 through 74. Okay? Okay, so I'm going so to Luke 1, 70. The promise, going there. Go there. And so this, so so what, so just to be clear, what I'm about to go to is going to address how the spirit was on. No, Christ. we gonna precept it together. So you, so you gotta address. We gonna that. precept okay, it I'm going together. There. Go ahead, go ahead, read it. Luke one what? Luke chapter one seventy through seventy four. Because Luke every time the spirit 73. came upon Saul or upon David or upon anybody, they were able to do one thing. Defeat their enemies. Did he do this? 70 through 74. Can you read that aloud, please? And I'll precept what you want want me to do. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from all the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Those oath which he swore to Father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our of our life, and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Okay. Now, can I sit up there and ask you a question? Did he do any of that? Did he save you did he save Israel from their enemies? Yes, Christ did save us from our enemy. <laughs> but the enemy so the Romans did not destroy them. First the of Romans all, did not came, beat, what, beat them what up. Christ, hold up. What Christ came to save us from was sin. That is our ultimate enemy because that is the reason why, Chris, you will die one day and I will die one is day. Is that what it say in Luke and 70 our that, 74? And, and our hold on. And to finish off on that, and then the enemies that we will be saved from, you already know, Ezekiel chapter 37, you already know the covenant of peace that he, he will make when we bring us into the land. Christ is the one that's going to bring us into the land. He's the one that's going to do that. It said, da- it said David by name. But yet you still putting Jesus there. Or there's several times there. to say David. There's several times to say David, and are you going to say that it was but David? But it don't. It's several before, times it don't say Christ I, I one time. Now do it. But I remember. I remember. But I remember yet you y'all placed him there. Mouth, you said out your own mouth several times to me that oh, where it says David, that this is referring to the Messiah. So it's like you switch it up. Like it's I know it's the Messiah, it's but first of all, David was crowned the Messiah in front of the people by a mediator. 
This Christ wasn't crowned a Messiah with who, no prophet the or no high priest. Who, there is no Messiah the right now. Proceed, who is the person that's going to proceed from the from David to uh, uh, you know, which they believe is a Messiah just as well? Who's that person to proceed from him? The the branch, the the root, you know, or the stem from J, uh, David? Has it has he come forth yet? You all believe right, that right, he but, has. But, but let me ask you a question. But hold on, let me ask you a question. Uh, that person that's going to come is that person going to die? Okay, now when we look at um, when we look at um, let's go to Ezekiel thirty-seven twenty through twenty-eight. Let's just read it. Can we read it? Go ahead. Okay, let's go to Ezekiel thirty-seven twenty through twenty-eight. All right. It say right there. Um, let's go. It says um, and the sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Then say to them, Thus saith the Lord. Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations. Christ didn't do it. Whatever they have gone and will gather from every side of them to bring into their own land, he didn't do it. And I will make them one nation in the land, he didn't do it. And on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, he didn't do it. Um, They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. They shall not defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with their transgressions. But I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Let's continue. David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. They shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwell, and they shall dwell there, they, their children, and their children's children forever. My servant David, he said it twice, my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, let me say that again, forever. One more time, forever. Let's continue. Forever. I will make a a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My tabernacle shall also be with them. Indeed, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The nations also will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. All right, people, Isaiah 53 dialogue session is now in the history books on the radio. Uh, definitely appreciate both parties for coming on and bringing forth the information. Right about now, what we're going to do is get some last words in from both special guests. And, of course, I believe their contact information for those who want to reach out in the description box. Of course, we're on the blog talk radio. We're on the iTunes podcast. And, of course, we're on YouTube and, uh, you know, YouTube, and you can look at the description box and you'll see the contact information of both special guests. Like I said, once again, I definitely appreciate both both special guests for coming on the platform and uh, for getting the information out there. Let's get some last words from both parties. Let's start off with uh, Chris, last words. All right. Um, peace, everybody. Um, I really enjoyed coming on tonight. Um, unfortunately, we got a little bit off track about Isaiah 53, but I proved in Isaiah 53 that that was the children, uh, Isaiah 53 verses 1 through 4, that was Israel. I proved in Isaiah 53 verse 10, that was the Lord killing them, and he said that he would take pleasure in doing that. The same context in which he said it in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 63, is the same context that he's using in um, uh, Isaiah 53 verse 10. We also know that the Lord afflicted them. He afflicted them with slavery, oppression, death. This is, this is his judgments towards them. When you read Isaiah 53 with full understanding, you're seeing that it's using a bunch of past tense verbs on afflictions that have already happened to Israel. I want to thank uh, GCOM for giving me um, the moment to um, sit down and have a dialogue with him. Um, I want to thank Sal. Um, I want to... Um, Thank the callers for um, calling in. Um, let's say I want to give a shout out to So Real. Thanks for the call this week. I want to give a shout out to Sister Sherry. Um, I want to give a shout out to Robert Reed. Thank you one more time, brother. 
I want to give a shout-out to Davon Mays. I want to give the biggest and the grandest shout-out to the Most High, um, our power. He's one, one, one. He created the heavens and the earth by himself. Shalom, everybody. Have a great night. All right, let's go to G-Con. Final words. Yeah, um, I just want to uh, give us, uh, give all praise to the Most High, creator of the heavens and earth, and his son, Jesus Christ, the second person in the Godhead. Um, I appreciate the brother Chris for coming out. You know, I had a great discussion. Um, you know, I just think that there has to be more um, understanding about certain things. Uh, um, you know, there was a lot of questions that was raised tonight, and I'm pretty sure that um, – you know, uh, some people um, some people got some understanding, some people didn't. But uh, for the most part, um, I think I proved tonight without a shadow of a doubt that, that you know, um, Israel, in, as well as the remnant of Israel, has not caused any type of healing within the nations um, at all, you know. and uh, But, you know, Israel has, uh, the remnant of Israel has been, you know, brought to the slaughter as sheep, but them they themselves even said that they, you know, have some type of guilt, you know, or they they are you know, have some type of um, they're not perfect, you know, they're imperfect basically, so they're not that servant of Isaiah 53 at all. That suffering servant of Isaiah 53 bears the sins of the people, bears their iniquities. He's uh, looked at as a guilt offering. Um, you know, he 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 given himself over as a guilt offering when himself had no deceit, no type of guile or no none of those things, you know. Um and that person is bearing the sins of that person. That person is that type and shadow that we see of all those rituals and ceremonies that we see in the tabernacle as well as going back to Adam, uh, the great Messiah, you know, a person that uh knows no sin, a person that can only um, uh, save the people And as the death Represents of the innocent blood being shed Which is him That, that, has, that, has, that has always represented that, represented that I think Chris made a lot of errors Tonight uh, We had the brothers call in and say they know the Hebrew uh, John, uh, I don't know how to say his name Hanukkah or whatever his name is uh, Very vital mistakes uh, uh, Very you know Important mistakes that he made you know, he, he, he parses the Hebrew. Then we got um, the brother Pickney or whatever his name is, Salisbury State. That brother, you know, um, he comes in, want to argue the Hebrew. Well, make your point. What's your point that you're trying to make? Because we know that there's certain texts that you want to go to that I know just as well, that I can go to, that I deal with linguists just as well. He said he has some type of degree. I, I would like him to present that to us. Uh, but for the most part, um, that's just the thing, you know, uh, Sal, I appreciate you uh, for what you did tonight for letting us have this dialogue. If any one of those brothers want to have a dialogue and say that they know the Hebrew on Isaiah 53, they can come with it. Uh, John was supposed to come with it, but he talking about bring the group. You can't even get past simple things. You went to certain scriptures tonight and got cut up with those scriptures. But you know the Hebrew, though. We didn't have to even go to the King James. We could have went to the Stone Tanaka, whatever type of commentary that you're using, because that's all it is, is them taking certain words, playing with certain words, and uh, basically uh, 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 putting commentary behind it. So we can go through the Bible and find different usages and do the same thing. But I guarantee you, mine's going to be more potent than what yours is. Can't get past that blood, and it's figurative. So with that being said, I think I proved my point. The only one that can die for Israel, you know, and uh, have, be perfect and, uh, and, and, and be innocent as that animal is Christ. You know, and with that, I want to say peace to the family out there. Make sure y'all tune in to G Consciousness Radio, Blog Talk Radio on Wednesdays. And also uh, make sure y'all tune in also to uh, my, uh, well, G Consciousness Live, my YouTube channel. Subscribe. Peace. 2017. Big you. The big talk for you. What up? Debate talk for you so you can't absorb.